for people that might be watching from the web, um, this is the second dive of the Oceano Profundo mission by the NOAA ship Okeanos Explorer to explore sea mounts and trenches around Puerto Rico. The second dive, this one, is on the septentrional fault, which is a major strike slope fault that's something like 400 kilometers long that extends from northwest to Puerto Rico all the way through Hispaniola towards Haiti. Um, it's a major fault by which the North American plate to the north is sliding to the west past the Caribbean plate. And our task today is to dive towards the bottom of it and come up its slope and try and understand how it terminates. Because at this location, the fault seems to terminate in a big bank of carbonate rock. And one of the big questions is what happens to it to the west? As well as looking Delta at the fault 15. and probably landslide structures as we go up the slope. Of course, we'll be looking at the spectacular biology um, like we saw yesterday. Um, so that's our mission today. Serious we altitude, start at about 3,700 meters and descending. climb as far as we can um, towards 2,500 meters. D2, 25 meters off bottom, descending. Bottom in sonar. D2, 10 meters up. Bottom in sight. Slowing. I'll hold at 2 0. And here we are on the bottom. And we can see carbonate mud Serious stop with descending. Two lots zero meters of ripples. Altitude. And I'm guessing one of the biologists on the line can tell us about the biology we might be seeing down here. Hey, Nav. Uh, Our things. I just uh, want to let you know uh, when we had to die here. Things so seem uh, pretty good. Could you get a uh, Doppler velocity? Uh, we'll get a metric on the current here. I'm, uh, off stick. Just to the east of the we had similar fields. Actually you can if you can have your co pilot pull it up on the sensors page. Yeah. Ah, there we go. Got it. What do we got, Chris? Thank you, Yuri, that's great. Like it's got it's west to east, so point oh seven meters a second. Is that corrected so for yeah, heading or is that wrong? Is, is the ROV just drifting on its velocity. with the current or is it actually moving I don't know. that way? Well, I'm looking I south see, I'm and I'm not going sure. left. So that would be east. Right. So, 0.7 knot, roughly. I'm just curious if they were doing a sort of a drift. Yeah, you also have a north velocity. velocity. If that's, if that's the case. Right. Currently about double the east right. velocity. Uh, it doesn't sound right. Yeah, it doesn't, does it? Okay. Looking at your camera. Let me see if I can... We'll let Nav... Let me see if I can pull up the... There is, let's see, there is... One of these ways I can get this on the... Okay, let me, uh... Start listening to the back row here. Yeah, here. We don't really see much in the way of biology. At some point, we may want to, um, when convenient, to stop and zoom in and, and look close at the sediment to see if there's any um, life forms there. The, the dark material we're seeing may be corrected for you to try to because it's changing um, a fair amount. Okay. Uh, it's come down uh, from the surface water. If you can. Thank you. We can confirm if you want to do another drift test by the. Okay, ma'am. Well, my heading's changed. And as you know, bring my nose you into the current. Is on the on one side of the Tell me yes. when you're drifting. Okay, I'm off stick. So just to confirm, Sorry. I think maybe for Tim. Yeah. What's in, your heading? Indeed, we were doing a drift two, three, test. Two three seven. Um, I think two three seven. The pilot degrees. Now setting the True. setting the uh, ROV up at the moment. That's great. That makes a lot of sense. And we still should be getting pushed right now in our, in our face. So, so they're drifting backwards now, too. So that's Is that the drift there? 
I, th yeah. I think that's the problem. Yeah, Tim. Negative point one 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 meters per second and negative point zero seven five. So that sounds like it's not corrected. That is not corrected. Yeah, okay. All right, so looks like we have it. If our little calculator is correct, we have an east speed of 0.13 negligible north. So current going to the east at about 0.2 knots, 0.25 knots, 25 centimeters a second. That uh, looks about like what I see in front of me. Watching you go across the serious screen is mm -hmm. indicative of that. And the tether is stretched way out to the east. Okay, watch leads. This is your pilot. I'm with you and I'm uh, ready for uh, instruction. Um, watch lead pilot, thank you very much. Um, I had a request to, just before we start a move. Could we actually zoom in on the mud below us and just see if we can sure. see any? I will thank you. gently alight and we'll be able to get uh, very good imaging here. Appears to be sandy. Video, your go for zoom. Video zooming. Oh. It's a mixed bag, shell detritus and uh, little, little bits of plant debris. This is our max zoom. Anybody on shore like to comment? Yeah, we're seeing some little pebbles here, but also terrapod shells, white shells in the foreground. Bridge, RV Nav. Certainly from the surface waters. Go ahead, Nav. It's certainly seeing plants where you see it blowing. Bridge, uh, ROVs on bottom, been on bottom for a couple of minutes. Uh, well, if you want to get closer to Just you wanted to discuss down. with you the bailout direction, um, given the what we're seeing on the bottom. Sure. We'd want to be looks very sandy, in an emergency. We'd want to be moving at uh, course over ground 285. True. Uh, these round, okay. ovoid shaped thing here's attached to a part of a plant material. That's all plant 285. True. Okay. That's what we thought it was. But I think I see some Good copy, Nat. Thank you. Too, Thank you, Bridge. Up and down video will be coming into the closer here. All right. I'm just going to track focus as you do that. Yeah, I would, yeah, I would think so. And that's all flying. We got returns uh, from the bottom at 105. Uh, so. Yeah, and the sonar needs to be started. Start. Ah. And this is all the plant material. Yeah. I thought I'm seeing some sort of bio help, but the um, Actually, thank you, pilot. That's great. I mean, if we can just start moving forward that. Um, towards the, the 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 rock face, and our overall plan for the day is basically just to go up the rock face, you know, looking for interesting things, just steadily going upwards. Roger that. Okay, wide, please, video. And uh, nav. Yeah. We can, uh, Wide. Thanks, Get us going. Good afternoon, everyone. So we are quite a ways from that rock face. The vector 175 degrees. Um, you know, if we believe the bathymetry, which we usually do, we're 550 meters from where we'll start seeing much of a rise. Oh, so we should move at a pretty good clip then. Yeah. So maybe we'll, but we are deep, so we don't want to get strung out and bang into something. Roger that. So maybe we'll start at point two. But we're also asking the ship to move sideways, so I don't know how much it's going to like that. Understood. Yeah. Okay. And it looks uh, relatively benign until that rock face? It looks like we won't go up more than 10 meters over Copy. 500. Yeah, start point two. So some of you might have heard that. We're about 500 
meters away from the rock face. Bridge are we now? And we're going to drive towards the rock face and start to traverse. Looking yeah, bridge. Um, rocks from we're going to be moving uh, approximately 550 off. meters, course 175 degrees. Um, just wanted to consult with well, you about you how to do that, realizing that that is pretty much a lateral move for you. Um, we're not going to want to move terribly fast because we're in deep water. Sure. Uh, maybe might recommend we just start with a ship move of 100 meters at Gary, I didn't catch what 175 said. degrees, 0 0.2 knots, and then we'll assess how hard you're having to work, things of that nature. Yeah, it sounds good to me. Uh, so 100 yeah. meters, 175 and 0.2. That's correct. Thank you, Eric. Just yeah, let's uh, give it a try and see what happens. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but on the other hand, as Tim says, oh. here, they get samples. <laughs> <laughs> so they, get, they, they sense things. Where so they are. I'm not allowed. To, I'm not allowed to huh? make any comment about sampling. <laughs> Chris, we got a shadow from the craft there. I wonder if we should swing it outboard now that we're down here. Uh, yeah, I can see that in there. I think it's from so the we're at a depth of 3,675 right. meters and we're going to be swing moving out. steadily towards the rock face over a soft Good sediment. Luck. There's a lot of ripples in the sediment. And Let's do I that. Let's didn't see the close up, up the of the pteropod shells as well. And bigger shells as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. And plant debris. Oh. Sargassum? You'll have to ask Tim that. Oh. Yeah, I think so, man. Why get to me? Okay. Do you remember what our average temperature was yesterday? Your depth? 2.3, I would say, was an average temp. 2.3, we're 2.5. Yeah, I think uh, we started at about 2.3, and we went up to about 2.5 by the end. You want to do tops too, Dave? Yeah, let's uh, let's make it pretty. Oh, yeah. There you go. Hey, can you tell us what the scale is on the sonar? Looking forward. Go ahead, watch it. That's 50 meters, Tim. That's a good question I'll ask. Sorry, come again, watch it. Um, we did not see much surface current. We it was. Uh, yeah, we just can't know. see the numbers on it. Are you talking oh. about the? You talking about the current? You talking about the bottom current? Tim. Oh yeah, we didn't see much surface current. At, it seems to be in this area. There might be some tidally driven current, so it's not steady. But we didn't see much this morning. Sorry, Tim. I was just waiting for people to finish. Speaking, um, the maximum diameter circle is 50, so I'm guessing that's 50 meters. Correct. So the circles are 12 and a half meters, 25 meters, 37 and a half meters, and 50 meters. And Sirius is 80 okay, meters. That's great. Thank that's you. Yeah, it looks like the, you know, Pilot, this is video. Do we have the uh, freedom to puppy dog a little bit yet? Rocky areas on 
Say again. I said, can uh, we move around and a little bit yet? That's There's the a view from dark Sirius, object so on the screen. I'd love to yeah. take a quick yeah. look Radar's at it. Radar's showing us between 10 and 25 meters. Sorry, sonar. Should come down a little bit uh, there, Chris. Just sure. Give me a little bit of room. Looks like we have. Get to play, you name it here. Stand Nav, bridge. Let me know when you're ready for Zoom. Go ahead, Bridge. Got uh, no problems uh, at all. Everything's in, in the green. Um, DP's handling the move without any problems. Okay. Um, I'll consult her with, uh, we may want to move up to point three um, in a moment once we get There's comfortable. There's a lot of plant debris or detritus. Looks like sargasso in pieces, but possibly also some seagrass leaves. Or, is, or blades, uh, I should say. We can get a zoom now video. It's either Canadian or uh, like cannabis. Is it a um, <laughs> uh, place, Matt, for... Um, a table, a placement, a fall themed placement. Or <laughs> just very, very autumnal. We're just missing the name of the cruise liner. Part of the Pier One collection. Okay, I'm satisfied with this. Yeah, okay. It does look like there's wood on the corner. If you look at the edge, it looks like wood. Yeah. Full wide. You zoomed in, it did not look like wood. Thanks, pilot. Did we go? Let's go max zoom again. Let's look at the edge. I heard some speculation there. No, I think it's it's like plastic or vinyl or something. I think what we're seeing is the shadow underneath of it. Yeah. Looks like it you has more edge. You can see gridded yeah, fiber glass on wood. I don't, I think it's very thin and I think what oh, we good call. think is an think edge is a shadow. I think it's a plastic piece myself looking yeah. at this view here. Well, or canvas, yeah. Silt up, I thought I saw it. Yeah. yeah, above that red leaf looks like a wood knot. Maybe it is a piece of canvas or plastic over, over wood. Yep, that's what it looks like. I think that's a stain. A stain? I, I'm, I vote for stain. Yeah. It's clearly a ritual object. Ah, it's wide, please. Full wide. Okay, let's have a little more look around here. Well, that's good enough for us. <laughs> right. I'm not sure we could determine exactly what that was, but. There seems to be a. My imagination tells me there's a linear track here just to the left. It does sure look like one, Dave. of line in one of our one of your aft LEDs is creating some shadows, Dave, so don't be alarmed if you see some. Piece of our line or somebody else's our, our line? daisy chain or okay. uh, something. Not to be alarmed. We can continue on. We are waiting for the train to get rolling ah, here. Gotcha, thank you. I have a little bit of leash here. One of the things we can do, video, let's zoom in on our, my footprint here. Sounds great. To get an idea of the firmness of the bottom. And we do have the sediment poker on board, correct? Sea poke. Sea poke, poke is available. Um, this is... I'm just checking for just for future reference. Right. This is pretty.
pretty compact, pretty consolidated. I didn't leave much depression at all here. That was a uh, maybe a hundred pounds of force or so there on the runners. Maybe less than a hundred, actually, come to think of it. But uh, I did thump it down. Okay, wide, please, video. Uh, hoping to find something sticking up on sonar. And I do see a something. I think it might be out of range, but I'll bring it to the fore. Oh, center screen, there's something up white yes. below. Yes, yes, yes. Possibly more trash. It's some in the, the foreground as well. The sediment is quite different here than it was yesterday when we first landed on the bottom. It was more muddy, would you say? Soon, please. Yeah, I think as people mentioned on the conference call, this seems to be much more sandy sediment um, than we saw yesterday. Oh, I missed the very beginning of the dive. I apologize. Missed the conversation. No need to apologize. You were getting lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a bit of plastic. If you look at the, at the entire imagery, okay, the wide, hole please. here at, at, at the end of the a very long, uh, I would call it like a ditch, which is uh, the trace of the fault. Mm -hmm. uh, just getting, if I recall it, it's for a while, to see shallower, some serious motion. Wet, definitely shallower. Yes, we're starting to see some movement in the tracking. Um, ship is reporting that point two is comfortable for them. Ship's about 65 meters into 100 meter move. So all of these small pebbles and shell fragments we're seeing are likely from accumulation. <laughs> I have high confidence in the bathymetry if we want to try to do point three, if the science is willing. Yeah, I'm comfortable uh, with any speed across this kind of bottom. It's just the when to start slowing up for the Right. The I was, uh, you know. Yeah, pilot, um, fine with trying to get to the rock face, you know, unless we see something really interesting. But quick snap zooms, I think, is fine. Okay. Well, so watch lead. Um, in this water depth, if we get, I mean, I, I think understanding what you guys want to do, it'd be advisable to move fo move forward at a little quicker pace, but that's probably going to put us in a situation where without a fair amount of time, it's going to be hard to reverse and come back to something we can do, as you said, quick snap zooms. But just want to make sure that we all understand each other. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm okay with that, and I think um, Mike Cheadle is, and everybody on, on the shore side, I can just get a confirmation from them, but our goals are really to, to look at the rock face, so um, anybody on shore have a problem with us uh, getting to the rock face a little quicker than um, normal, which would mean we can't really go back to something. We'll just have to do quick snap zooms on the fly. Yeah, I say let's move. Yeah, I say let's move. We're all ready to go. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, let's uh, move as fast as we can safely <laughs> to the rock base. Video, if you Good could copy. Give us a little gain there to see into the distance. Thank you. Bridge, RV now. Go ahead, Nav. Yeah, could we add 100 meters to this move? No problem. And could we also uh, try to bump it up to 0 0.3 knots? You got it. 100 meters, 175 bearing at 0 0.3 knots. Yeah. And we're going to probably end up moving about 500 meters, uh, but we'll just do it 100 meters at a time and, and see how 0.3 feels. Sounds good. I did. Yeah, Dave. Not sure. Hi, Nav. We have a question uh, from Facebook uh, for you guys. Uh, when you're ready, I can 
give it to you. Hopefully one of you can answer it. Shoot. All right. Can you explain delta as opposed to pitch? I think that would be delta depth versus the attitude of the vehicle. Yeah. So when we, the way we use delta, we talk about delta Z, Z being the vertical direction. And we're talking about the change in depth between Sirius and the ROV, uh, between Sirius and D2. So we're talking about the, the change in distance, the change in depth between the two vehicles. So how how far above Sirius is from the ROV, which right now it's uh, 15, Sirius is 15 meters above the ROV, so looking down. Um, pitch we usually use to mean the attitude of either vehicle. So the pitch is um, the rotation sort of up and down of the, the bow or the front. So as it as the bow of either, of either ROV goes up, that's pitching up or pitching down, vice versa. Great. Thank you, Brian, for that explanation. That's Brian Bingham. I'm happy to talk about coordinate frames. That's I'm very comfortable in that area. You can keep your bearings. I can do that. Quaternions, I might need to use Wikipedia, but I'm good at it. <laughs> Okay, we're going to get a zoom in on, uh, looks like sponges uh, attached to a uh, rock. So pilot's um, ship is moving at point three. Okay. Seems to be is it good happy. Sure. Can I copy that? It is trash. And Sargassum. And watch lead uh, at point three, five hundred meters. It'll take about an hour just to let everybody know. Okay. You can see the floats. So this is a you know a, sh a shallow water uh, algae that is actually. Um, we see often as detritus on the deep sea floor. So over time, it it degrades and falls down to the deep sea floor. And if you saw the little balls coming up there, the actual floats that help keep the blades up in the in the water column to receive uh, more light. Yeah, Andrea. Some of the white things look like uh, amphipods. Can this come out a little bit to you? I don't know if you saw that. I uh, on the sargassum? Oh, is that a gastropod, too, on the left? Come back in. Yeah. We're on the little white dots at center screen. That's good. Oh, it... There's uh, a legged creature lower. Yeah, I see that. Is that what you were looking at, Tim? Yeah, I think so. The, the center bottom. I don't know if that was the isopod. But clearly, there are the uh, the snails on that. But it looks like a rock. Video, let's come wide. There's another. Yeah, you might want to spin out and get that. I think it's a bit of trash, but it's not sure. Okay, we're continuing on. There's another piece of trash ahead. Another piece of plastic. Just plant it right here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hauling you around. Let me get uh, yeah. let me get back closer Let's to home here. Way out to the east.
can see those ripples in uh, mm -hmm. sonar. Oh, you've got a... Oh, um, there's something in my camera. Is that a vampire toothus? I don't know. You're gonna come up. I'm going to come serious? up a little bit. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have a squid sighting. If you want to follow me. Coming up. And ahead. Got away. You know, without a frame of reference, we don't know which yeah. way to chase. Right. Can look in a uh, bubble cam, but you can maybe clip a. Somewhat decent photo from that. I just saw the uh, arms and the bell. Yeah, I'm reviewing the, the video next to me, and you could see it briefly in the upper right hand corner of the Sirius view. I notice if you take that uh, PTZ cam and you zoom it just the slightest amount, then the focus is much improved. Oh. If it's full wide, it doesn't seem to be able to focus. Yeah. I tried to manually do it. I wasn't happy. of what might be another ball of sargassum. In your starboard cam, what is that floating? I don't know. Thing on the bottom will stay there. Let's look up. Let's see if we can Uh, get a halfway zoom on this video as I move in. This is interesting. Another piece of plastic, but what's surrounding it? Coconut, maybe. Hmm. It's a coconut-like shape. Oh, there's some it clear is. plastic behind it. Uh, plastic cut behind it. What you say, coconut? A uh, little bit more zoom, please, video. Party with coconut drinks. Yeah. Looks, looks like, like it. Cruise ship uh, <laughs> trash, maybe. Cruise ship trash. Oh, possibly. Yes. Yeah, are we coming to some kind of a camp? As it looks in the sonar and also look before uh, from the serious view. That uh, sonar is probably just a little bit of a depression there. Sorry, yeah. Uri. I didn't, I didn't quite hear you when you started. Coming towards Quiet, some sort of... Bridge, are we now? Is some sort Good of chasm or... I don't really seem to be handling this no, well because we extend this move another hundred I'm not sure what that is, but I think we are so still far. fairly you far away from the rock face. Wrong. Oh, yeah. That might be it just might a be just a gentle dip in the sediment. We'll get up and have a look. There does appear to be a horizon here in the distance. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, quite a, a little considerable ridge. horizon. Yeah, kind of a full trace. Mm. 
Oh, good geology. This is a pretty cool view in Sirios. The structure we're coming up to. Little uh, sand channel. Saw a silver flash too, possibly. Yeah. Just caught that. Trending east-west. Thank you, pilot. So we were just uh, looking at a coconut, um, and there was two plastic cups. One was inside, one was behind, and talking about how you can see the ripples, noting that there's a lot of current that sweeps through this area, and this area may be a depositional um, place for already Look seen so a lot of trash and uh, different types of shell, shell fragments and also pebbles and cobbles and things that are sweeping from the east to the west, from the west to the east. Um, the direction of flow would be from 2.30. 2.30, so, okay. Yeah. So looking at the bathymetry, um, one guess might be that the flow is coming from the um, northeast down and along the channel to the west as a, as a guess, but we actually can't tell which way it's going. Right. This is kind of a mixed bag. There's an anemone on the bag, a hormathid, hormathid anemone. Okay, wide please, video. Starting to see uh, Sirios moving now. Yeah, there's a pretty consistent trend to the strike of those ripples. They're all striking about 140, 150. Looks like you're coming up to another one. Yeah, another sand channel here uh, in 20 meters or so. And, uh, I'll align with the uh, strike when we get there, get a something quantifiable. Thank you, Pilot. We're at a depth of 3,675 meters. Just coming to view on Sirios here. The ROV D2, we're moving currently mostly in a southerly direction towards a rock face. The sand berm or ridge really is striking almost exactly east-west. It looks like we have another little sand ridge right here. Um, it's really low relief, but it may be helpful if we could if we drop targets on these little ridges that we see. We can see how far apart they are. Roger, Tim, we can do that. Not geologists folks here, but um, yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a bad thing to do. Okay. Now, could you drop a target at um, this ridge? Yes, I can. Thank you. Yeah, and you can see them pretty well on the sonar.
Okay, here's the ridge. Mark that bearing right there, 9.5. Looks uh, about right, 9.5. Interesting, there's an accumulation of little brown balls in the bottom of this. I don't know whether those are floats from... Uh, from Sargassum? Yeah, let's get a... I think it's both. I mean, you could see some of them, some floats, but also blades as well. Let's get a zoom here video. These appear to be... Those are like sediment balls or yeah. something. Yeah, they look like... Um, you can see the floats there. They're tiny, much tinier than the lighter brown color. There's a couple oh. in the foreground right now. Those are the nematocysts from the sargassum. Looks like puppy chow. It does look like puppy chow. So maybe that's just rolls along and accretes. That couldn't be a xenophyophore, could it? It, it doesn't look like one to me. Yeah. Um, let's see. Anybody back on shore have an idea of what we're looking at here? I mean, the sargassum blades, of course, but the lighter material. We'll clip that out. I got to get up and go here. Yeah, and uh, behind Wide it, please. you can see an, the accumulation of pteropod shells as well. <laughs> Taylor Heil meatballs. Yeah. They sure look like little meatballs, little Swedish meatballs. <laughs> Geologists on shore, any thought about the origin of the, the apparent sand ridges? Um, are they a current feature, or is there any chance they represent structure deep down beneath the sand? I think they're current features. Nav, could you uh, drop a target here as well? Thanks, Yuri. Just coming into yeah. alignment here. Pilots, do we have any idea on the currents on the bottom right now? Doesn't uh, we look can, to be much, but... We can make another measurement here. Let me get lined up on this ridge here, and we'll get a bearing, and then we'll do another drift test. Our, our estimate when we got on the bottom was 0.13 meters per second, pretty much due east, 90 degrees. 0.13 meters per second due east. Yeah. I'm thinking, call this... 270, almost due east-west, as best I can eyeball it. Would you repeat that, Dave? I missed the beginning. Uh, 270 on the uh, bearing of the ridge. Great, almost thanks. Almost just as close to due east-west as I can estimate by eye, by aligning the uh, ROV. We're in a whole series of them now on the sonar. Oh, yeah, you can see several on the sonar. The sonar is on the quad view and feed three. I get my heading to be perpendicular here. So if any of you are wondering what the sonar looks like, it's in feed three, um, and it's in the, the panel on the bottom right believe if I'm seeing that correctly yes yes another piece of trash so the spacing of the ridges is about 12 meters or so 10 meters mm -hmm. yeah and they're all quite parallel and uh, as close to due east west as we can measure thank you pilot You drifting, Dave? I was drifting. Oh, yeah. Just gave it a little bump. Now I'm off stick. Tell me where your heading is. Uh, due south. 180. Pilot, you you will be a great uh, estimate to this. Um, 
Any idea of how high those ridges are? What's the amplitude of the ridges? Are they sticking up 50 centimeters, 30 centimeters? Mm, I think what I'll do is get over the top of it here and so we have some idea of scale in the foreground. Go ahead, survey one. Todd's coming. I already worked it out with him, yeah. Thanks. So based on that uh, watch lead, based on that drift test, we got a speed of 0.139, so call it 0.14 meters per second at 300 degrees. That makes that doesn't make any sense. Maybe you were driving, Dave. 0 0.14 meters no, per second? No, nah, I don't, don't report that. We didn't get the direction right. I don't okay. Think. So, yeah, there was a beautiful midwater shrimp that just went through the view there. We'll have to repeat it, watch the, because I got it basically on the reciprocal of what we had before, but about the same intensity. So it may have been that I may have not got it until before Dave started driving. I'll get uh, out ahead here, and we'll, we'll try that again. Sure. Great. Thank you, guys. I'm, th I'm thinking on the order of, I don't know, 15 centimeters, just uh, guessing. You could do uh, Thank you, pilot. auto depth about a meter off, Dave, and, change, and record the change in altitude. Hmm. That's the thought. So the pilot suggested maybe the amplitude of the sound waves is on the order of 15, 20 centimeters, something like that. Okay, auto depth is engaged. I don't know uh, how stable we'll be. Moving ahead slow. Showing 0.8 altitude. Is that a frisbee on the right or a it plate? Sure, I would say paper plate. Yeah. I'm just guessing. Or a styrofoam plate. Okay, now. Yeah, bridge. Um, looks like we're about at the end of that move. You got another seven meters left. Yeah, we can just keep keep the momentum and keep. We'll add another hundred meters. So that'll be four hundred total. You got it. Thank you. Clearly, I think we see from the sonar that the sand ridges are getting closer together as we perhaps are approaching the rock face. Certainly they are getting closer together. Maybe they're only about five meters apart now. Another nice view in Sirios view, all of the, the ripples and the ridges and the sediment. Pretty happy driving that fast at auto depth, huh? Okay, we're just coming across one now, point eight. Seven. Is the uh, height of that? What was point eight seven? That's what we're measuring right now. Okay. This is predicated on the vehicle staying at a <laughs> constant depth within centimeters, which is maybe uh, asking too much, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, we saw 20 centimeters of change there. Another piece of plastic trash. Thank you, pilot. We're at a depth of 3675 meters. Dive two of the Oceano Profundo expedition. Brian, I'll set up another uh, drift here in a second.
off stick. We're just trying to uh, take a measurement, an approximation of the currents that may we may be experiencing on the bottom at this moment. Keeps increasing like eight centimeters backwards. It's definitely diagonal in the visual here. I uh, got like four centimeters in the y direction. is dominant looking uh, visually and I'm gonna have to get going here All in a minute. That's interesting. Watch lead. We uh, measuring about ten centimeters a second speed at three, four, six degrees, which is a different direction than we had at the beginning, but consistent speed. What was the beginning direction? The beginning direction was RV is being pushed to the east. Now it's northwest. Hmm. 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 Might have got something transposed there because it's. I've been uh, in this same crabbing direction the whole time. I thought we looked at it when we did the drift test and we decided it was consistent, but my memory may be wrong. Zoom, please. Is this a little what bit that? more? My question exactly. It looks like some kind of souvenir. What in the a world? souvenir. It's so talking geology again, Jason and Yuri. I'm still intrigued a little bit about the structural idea here. I mean, we've got the um, monoblock to the um, north and um, the, the limestone um, escarpment effectively to the south. Is there any chance that those um, ridges are actually structural in some way, whether it's sliding down both slopes and meeting in the middle and then the ripples are just passing over the top? Any thoughts or is that a crazy idea? understand what you meant here. Can you repeat that? Yes, yeah, sorry, Yuri. So imagine we drew a north-south cross-section across the, the valley. Could it be that the material is slumping down from the north and south, and so we're getting little folds or little thrust faults, which are, you know, just emerging as ridges in the sediment? Uh, I thought that the... Uh 
general direction of the uh, ripple such that the flow is from the east northeast. Like I'm sorry, yeah, east northeast, as you suggested. Right. From 50 to 70 degrees. And that will uh, fit more with the flow coming down from the saddle between Monoblock and, really and Monopatch and white, flowing please? westward. It may also be that there is a flow coming the other direction from the uh, uh, There may be some sediments also sliding okay, from the north of the yeah, south. Bridge, we the go ahead and keep moving. Another hundred. Another hundred. Thank you. Larry, I agree with you totally um, about the ripples. I was just thinking about these sand ridges. I mean, the sand ridges are east-west, so they're parallel to the fault, effectively. I mean, is there any chance that they're simply little folds in the bottom of the, of the basin? Okay, oh, I understand now what the question is. No, I think, uh, and Jason may correct me, but I think that the sand ridges themselves are uh, also features of the flow itself rather than uh, anything that is tectonic. Okay. We okay. saw similar things also to the east outside the fault uh, when we dove last time. I think that somehow the flow does not just work as one single wide sheet, but there may be some eddies in it or something like that that from time to time accumulate uh, uh, some sediment also, or there's a slight slowing at some place uh, where it basically deposits some of the sediments. Great, Yuri. Thank you. That's great. We're at a depth of 3,673 meters, 3,673 meters, still moving um, mostly due south right now and to uh, our first uh, wave point close to the bottom of uh, the rock face. seeing a lot of ripples in the uh, sediment, uh, indicative, indicative of uh, strong current flow, and a lot of material accumulating here in this region, uh, including sargassum here. detritus, so detritus from uh, algae that grow in shallower waters or uh, even uh, surface waters, and a lot of different trash. We have our first uh, benthic shrimp. Let's see if Tim maybe know this species. Plesiopeneus like. Yeah. Go ahead, Tim. Let's hold that for a minute. Let me, uh... He's having a hard time with the current, too. So, this is possibly a Plesiopeneus species. You can see it has extremely long antenna um, that kind of come up and then wrap around, um, doubling the body length of the ship itself. You know, they're used for, um, f for sense it's a sensory type for organ. Sure. They're, they're used for, for feeling things, maybe coming up behind them, um, help get away from predation, or also, of course, finding uh, prey themselves, too. I just felt my pressure wave there. Okay, wide. Plastic spoon.
And so we're still traversing the sandy bottom with the ripples. The sand bridges we were talking about appear to be fading out, or at least locally here. There's maybe some weak structures, but nowhere near as prominent as we just saw. Yeah, these ripples are at a 45 degree to the major channels. Yeah. Uh, looking uh, 128, 130 here. Now if I turn back uh, perpendicular to this, we might pick up some uh, ridges in the distance. So the sonar sees them in a perpendicular view. Thanks again, pilot. No, nothing, uh, nothing on the uh, 50 meters or so. So Tim Shank and I, uh, if Tim, if I can get you on the phone line. Is Tim still there? We're at a depth of 3,670 meters. Let's get a zoom center screen here video. What is that? That's huh. Can't really say wide, please. Looking at a zoomed in view of uh, some sargassum detritus on the seafloor. You can also see some pteropod shells and other little cobbles accumulating in, along these ripples in the sand. So during yesterday's dive, we were at the same depth range yesterday. And um, although we saw a lot of uh, vertical rock faces, we also traversed over areas that were mostly soft sediment, kind of overlaying the, the, the rock step structures that we observed and noticed that there were several sea cucumbers in some areas, which are often found in soft sediment um, places. They're deposit feeder sea cucumbers. They feed on organic matter, um, settles to the bottom. And we're just noticing the very so. lack of sea cucumbers here. I was discussing this with Tim Shank in the chat room. Um, a little, a little more and here's another uh, shrimp, the same species, possibly a plesiopodeus. Go ahead, Nav. Yeah, Bridge, uh, I think we can add another 100 meters. Okay, you got 40 the meters left. Yeah, into the okay, thank you. You got it? Actually making some headway. Yeah, this is his lazy uh, brother, Tim. He's uh, going with the they're, flow. They're typically higher off the bottom than this. We've only seen this close to the bottom normally. So, so that's also indicative of having a higher current as you get up off the seafloor. I also see a lot of material on the seafloor um, moving in front of us. I don't know if that's the, the, the pressure wave or the bow wave from the ROV or if it's actually currents moving the material. I, I'm thinking it's from the ROV. Yeah, what are your thoughts on the lack of uh, holothurians here? Why 
slide, please. Dave, you got fish on your port side. It's leaving you. You're not going to have. Did I hear fish on port I'm side? I'm working on it. You can zoom on Sirius <laughs> video. I'm sorry, Andrew. Did you ask a question about Hall of Thirty? should be coming into view now, facing you. Uh, yeah, I wanted to get your opinion on, we were discussing in the chat room the lack of holotherians here, and we were in the same depth range yesterday. Oh, we have a, another Corifinoides coming yeah. up. Looking straight down. Possibly you know, Armatus, anyway. a Grenadier, the family Macraridae. You can see its chin barbel pretty well. Don't chase it too far up, dude. Yeah. Don't oh. see any ectoparasites on that side of the fish. Okay. I think that's all we're gonna get. He led us on a merry chase. <laughs> uh, more garbage. So yeah, Tim, I, I was just, because we were chatting about it earlier, I wanted to get your thoughts if you had anything, the lack of Holothurian sea cucumbers here compared to yesterday's dive. Yeah, you know, I'll just remark that we don't see yet. And it could be because of the you, you see all this plant material. You think there'd be a lot of organics here that that they would want to have in the in the sediment to feed on, but um, we're just not seeing them. So the curiosity. Uh, I don't know if anyone else has any ideas uh, out there about uh, the rates of uh, fermentation here uh, versus the. I mean, sort of the morphology of the seafloor. I think it has to do with organics as to why they're not. Why not? They're not here. But we don't see a lot of things we normally see um, in the sediment. We don't see any tube anemones. Not a lot of things that would um, uh, either be sort of bottom out there. Uh, filter mm -hmm. feeders, if you will, or um, those that actually use the sediment and feed in the sediment. So I'm not seeing either one of those. It's uh, much of a curiosity. Um, Casey just relayed an uh, online question um, from somebody watching from ashore, and so I thought I'd try and answer that question. And the question was, comes back to this question of what's causing those ripples and those sand ridges. And what we can see is the ripples have a very consistent orientation, striking about um, 130, 140. And what we're diving in is we're diving in an east-west trending valley. So most likely those ripples are caused by currents running along that valley in a approximately east-west direction. The currents will actually be perpendicular to the ripples, but the direction of the currents is controlled by the shapes of the valleys. As for those biggest sand ridges we saw, those are a little bit more enigmatic. They are trending east-west parallel to the valley, and we were kind of discussing whether they might be ge represent geological structure below, or more likely another consequence of the complicated um, current flow in the bottom of this valley. Hopefully that helps answer that question. More plastic. Workshop ROV now. Hey, Bobby, you got time to give me a little bio break? Andrea, what's a Holothurian's tolerance for current? I wonder if they would just get rolled along the bottom here, or could they? I think the current may be too strong, but it's probably more linked to a uh, lack of uh, organic material. Uh-huh. Yeah, let's get a zoom on that dark, blocky object there. I mean, we don't really see any other life. We've only seen a couple shrimps and that one, Coryphenoides, so far. This may be a, a little piece of things to come. Can't tell. 
looks like mm -hmm. stained rock. Let's see if we can. Jason Chater, do you have an idea, or Mike? Uh, a manganese-covered piece of rock. Yeah. <laughs> Probably see more of that today. Uh. Hopefully we'll see some fresh stuff, some stuff where we can see through the black covering. <laughs> Thanks, video. We're in a depth of 3,665 meters. Yeah, Andrea, I also think it gets a little strange that we're not seeing ophiroids when you have sediment at this depth. A lot of sediment like this at this depth. So I don't know if it's a current issue or, or organic issue or what. Right. Sure Combination of both. Common at this depth and, and high sedimented area. Would the uh, mysterious rolling rolling balls, the puppy chow, would that knock them down or I think make so. life we had a, a, an answer to what that those mysterious balls may have been. I think Jason typed it in earlier. I guess it's worth commenting on the morphology of the ripples. We have been seeing this change. Look at the ones we're seeing now. They're absolutely parallel. Whereas earlier we were seeing um, ones which were just a little bit more complicated and not as parallel as this. Yeah, bearing 300. I wish I knew some sedimentology to interpret these things. But again, presumably um, reflecting subtle changes in the currents and the velocity of those currents. Beautiful pictures, guys. Thank you. Yeah, we've got some harder returns out here. For yeah, might be seeing support, but probably those. Starting to see more of these. Uh, Manganese coated rocks. Yeah, pieces of rock here. There's some shadows out there, Dave. You see it? Oh, I do. Looks like more substantial rocks. Coming up ahead. Geology. Some more debris. No, we blocks. have we have geology. Blo debris blocks. Yes. Wow. Real crops. No. no, just just just, just rubble. Debris. Yeah. yeah. Again, some rounded blocks that are manganese coated or iron manganese coated. Very difficult to identify what they might be. Pilot, can we get a zoom in on the sure surrounding the rocks, too? Yeah, so what we can say is they're almost yeah, certainly... Bridge, can we uh, 
slow our speed to 0 0.2. Okay, zero pieces of the uh, cliff or the steep slopes that we're about to approach falling downwards. The rock on the right has some very nice possibly bedding, you see the horizontal or the gently dipping flat lines in there, it implies it's a bedded rock, uh, probably a sedimentary rock of some sort. Tim Shank uh, is just noting as well, there's really no uh, sessile fauna colonizing these rocks. One little spiky pink thing, almost center screen. We got any more zoom video? Yeah. Interesting. Thanks. Okay, wide please. Hmm. Not quite sure what that is. We're getting closer straight down at you, Pilot. Yeah. Okay, one more zoom at the... Uh, Can we get another focus on the striations in that rock as well, Dave? Okay. Sorry about that. That's all right. I'll just let us drift over. Okay, come out a little. I'm Okay, I'm gonna come right. How's that? And I must dash. Do we have it? Or is it the rock? The one on, on the, the right. right? Okay, back in please, video. Yeah, the striations. Okay, hold on. Get this back. So More zoom. Halt. Great. Thank you, Pilot. Great. Um, I'm going to, forgive me, Andrea, okay, wide, please. I'm going to correct you here. Mm -hmm. in, in geology, we would use striations perhaps to um, describe scratch marks on a fault surface. Those are almost certainly, we could see those things going around the rock. They're almost certainly sedimentary layers. Oh, great. So much finer version of the bedding that we were looking at yesterday. Okay. So some, probably some fine-grained sedimentary rock is, a, is the best we can guess. Okay. Well, maybe I got got it wrong. I think Jason said focus on the striations, so maybe he was thinking of something else. No, no. I'm oh, sure, that sure that's what he meant. Okay. <laughs> I'll correct Jason there. <laughs> correct my geology all day long, please. <laughs> More of the same. I've lost my event log, so Jason can be writing good comments at the moment. <laughs> Like you have some more up ahead in sonar if you want to run out and spend more time at them. Might be just out of range. Come down a little bit. And terrain's rising a little bit here. Come up a couple of meters. Bridge. A few more uh, rock ahead, blocks. Bridge. To Got about debris. Uh, rock debris. 17 meters left in this move. All right, thank you, Bridge. We'll Looks like I'm starting to pick up some center, which I get to 40 mm. meters as well. Again, if you know, all of these uh, um, rocks have no, really no obvious uh, colonizing sessile fauna. So we don't see any sponges here. So we did yesterday on the rock faces on um, some areas were just covered um, with different Quick species zoom. of glass sponges. That orange. Is that a holotherian? Looking. Okay, a little Our more zoom. First one, I think we. 
Yeah, I saw this yesterday swimming the same species. I don't think we've ever got a genus name on it. Our first Holothurian of the day. While we're watching the Holothurium, Casey just piped in through the chat room a question about what we saw yesterday, and she had a, uh, a viewer calling in and asking about the strata we were looking at yesterday, the escarpment we were diving up to the north of Puerto Rico, and um, they'd read that it's in a very unstable condition. I think the what we found yesterday, at least where we were, and we should stress that we were only in one small part of that big escarpment, what we actually saw was little sign, very little sign of unstable condition. Yes, over a very long time scale, little pieces are breaking off and falling down to the bottom of the Puerto Rico trench. But what we saw yesterday was um, uh, sediment covering lots of the rocks that looked like it had been there for quite a while. And though, yes, there was a big earthquake there and it might have been shaken. What we actually found by exploring was that there was actually... Violet's the very ship move is complete. Very so we've got Very little substance of that rock face. So, yes, it is a risk. 90 to 100 meters of swing left in maybe series. Maybe many years in the future, oh. some slab of rock will fall we'll in that area or maybe sonar. in the area that we are now and actually lead to a tsunami rain wave but what we actually saw yesterday was was that things look reasonably stable and then we just passed an anemone on a rock anemone on the rock yeah how far back Oh, there it is. Yep. Snap zoom. A little bit more. Uh. Can we come in any more on it? Yeah, just, just gonna jockeying pan for around. position here. Give us that a, a view of the oral side. slightly to keep you in view, Dave. Okay. Okay, yeah, Andrew, is that a sponge just below it? That white object? Yeah, it looks like it. Tim, I think this is a, a different species of anemone than we than we observed yesterday. A little bit more zoom, please. Yeah, Let's I agree. See. Now looking down at it. Yeah. Uh, Estefania Rodriguez at the AMNH confirmed that the anemones on the stocked sponges that we observed were the in the family Hermaphidae. I'm still waiting to hear about the coralomorph that we saw. And this this may be a, could this be a coralomorph as well? It's Got bulbous tips on its tentacles. A couple more seconds here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm way off here, so I'm kind of bobbling around. Okay, let's come wide video. I think we we can get an ID from the clips. Go yeah, that's great. Thank you. Go straight ahead, do south, Dave. Around that. I'll follow you back around.
So all of this rock material that we are observing now, this originated uh, perhaps from the rock face above and has fallen down? Almost certainly, yeah. yeah. As we progress towards the rock face, what we're starting to see is more and more of these blocks of, okay. of manganese-coated rocks. They're on average starting to get bigger. And so there's two things, both the possibility that they're falling down and also we're starting to see maybe a talus slope that's starting to emerge from the sediment um, as we get closer to the wall. In this case, it looks like they are blocks sitting on the mud, but as we get closer, we might expect to just see blocks that are on the face of the slope just poking up through the rocks, through the mud. It's very hard to identify these rocks because they're all covered with this iron magnesium coating, which makes them um, look black, or manganese coating, sorry, which makes them look black. But, th for example, the one we're flying over to the left, you know, are these flat shapes, and you can see um, horizontal lines off to them within them, which is suggestive that they are sedimentary rocks. But as I said, it's very difficult to tell because of the coating. It is possible if they were coming from the south wall, sorry, from the north wall of this valley, that they're actually metamorphic rocks. Mm -hmm. There's, there are two objects back here. Oh, gee. Somebody's picnic blew off the deck. Are those metal metal plates or aluminum? I uh, zoom, please. Dixie plates. Well, it looks like paper. Maybe pl well, no, it's, it's, co it's probably is it coated in plastic? Plastic coated paper, perhaps. Yeah. Again, just a noticeable lack of uh, sessil fauna colonizing these rock blocks. We're at a depth of 3,640 meters. Is it, would we have any idea of how old this, if this is like landslide material would be? Or this debris material? My guess is it's reasonably recent in that, you know, we've seen the currents, there must be so much sediment. So Pilots, Tra my estimate is traveling about through here. 40 that meters my of guess is that these blocks have fallen down okay. relatively um, recently. I mean, again, some of them you can see are clearly sitting on top of the mud surface. Some are buried or poking out, up. but some just appear to be you sitting on top of the mud. So, um, but they do have uh, this magnetic coating, slower? right? So, keep what, moving slower. So, how yeah. long does that? Maybe do another. Process occur. I mean, is it on the orders of a few years? Months, uh, tens of years, hundreds of years? It's a question Very I don't really you know, know the answer to. It can be reasonably quickly. It's certainly not hours or days, Go but it now. certainly could be yeah, bridge years, like tens a of years. 15 meter ship um, move. It appears to happen very 175 quickly. 175 degrees, okay. 0 0.2 knots. Okay, yeah. good copy. I guess I'm thinking uh, again, meters, anything geology or biology, you know, not seeing nuts. any copy that, uh, colonizing you. fauna on these rocks that whether if this was so recent, there just hasn't been enough time yet um, for that process to happen. Yes, I, I agree totally. I mean, I think the biggest time constraint here is that we can see some of these blocks sitting on the mud. And if we've got the ripples and the currents there, that, I mean, it appears to be a very um, current active area. So
if we should tilt the upper swing arms a little bit. Rotate them a little bit forward, get a little bit more light up the hill. So are we? I'm not sure if we can. I will try. Uh, I think I put the, put them as far out as I could. Okay. Um, yeah. Andrea, just go ahead. Watch me. Answer your question of earlier. Uh, oh, you can't see it at all. So um, we're yeah we're kind of in the approach to the wall. I don't know that this wall is going to be as video. steep as it was yesterday. It's a cool C star. Sorry, I wasn't online. Um, no idea what that is. I've never seen it. Maybe Christopher Ma is, is watching. Maybe he'll call in if we're lucky and we'll get a description. That's all you got, pilot. Okay, thanks. I've actually, I, I don't know, any, has anybody else seen this species before? I've, um, this is Tim, I've never okay. seen this species before, I don't think, but I have seen it down to, um, 8,000 meters in the uh, Kirk Trench, um, doing the, the same thing. This this with this open um, area in the, in the central part um, that, that also occurs very shallow. So I'm trying to look it up right now. Okay. To have it uh, close by. And, uh, and what about at the end of each of the arms? The just filaments coming off. Wow, it's really beautiful. Well, if Christopher Ma is not online, maybe we can uh, send a photo to him uh, later today and he can get a, an ID back to us. It's really cool. Can we, um, Pilot, zoom in any closer on the edges of the, the tips of the arms, the filaments coming off? Max Zoom? Okay, yeah, we're at Max Zoom, Amy. Great, thank you. I don't know if I can get any closer. Come full wide. Let me get the uh, lay of the land here. Oh, yeah, we can we can move up. A, we can move up a little All bit right. here. Got a little bit of time. Just while, just while we're moving up, Jason Chadov, um uh, chat roomed in and told us a little bit more about the manganese coating and and Jason told us that in fact actually it takes a, a quite a while for these layers to form in this sort of environment okay and so he quotes thousands to perhaps millions of years okay you need some help with tilt Chris got that I can uh, point the upper swing arms down too I think we got enough light here. Hello, this is Chris Ma. Hi, Chris. Um, Welcome to the Okeanos hey. Explorer. How are you? Cool. Oh, my first one today. Okay, come on in. Or on the whole we'll thing. Wait for the uh, dust so the here. purple uh, sea star that you were looking at is Hymenaster. Um, tilt, Chris. That is kind of the characteristic uh, deep sea slime star. Deep sea uh, slime uh, star. They're really bizarre looking. Um, okay. the, the sort of opening that's on the top is a structure called the osculum. <clears throat> um, it's a hole uh, because um, the entire top of the animal is like a big circus tent. Okay. So water has to go yeah, through the hole to, gotta have to, go. to the surface of the sea star so that it can pick up oxygen and stuff <clears throat> uh, underneath the tent because all the gills are located underneath it. Um, and so it's pulsating all the time uh, underneath uh, uh, the, that sort of big uh, purple tent. Um, they hey, can emit this? slime as a defense mechanism. Uh, so if they're menaced, and I've missed, I've picked them up, and they, just, and they just spit out mucus uh, from <laughs> that opening uh, as a defense mechanism. And um, we're learning a lot of interesting things about uh, 
their evolutionary history because they, it turns out, also occur very early on in the history of sea stars. So um, they're fascinating animals, and they occur all around the world. That particular one, uh, you know, they can be very big, and the skeletons are very uh, reduced. So there's really not a lot to them. It's mostly um, kind of gelatinous. Okay. There's some, some, some bony material holding it together, but most of it is like a big living pillow of, of slime and mucus. Uh, so uh, bizarre animals, you'll probably see more of them. Uh, it's not entirely clear what they eat, but it's uh, definitely um, a cool uh, thing to start off uh, seeing today. Great, thank you. I have two um, questions for you before you hang up. Um, one, at the end yeah. of each of the arms, there were filamentous like material. Are those were those modified tube feet or something else? And what are they used for? You're you're exactly right. Uh, those are the tube feet. Uh, they're just um, for some reason, probably because that's the direction they're moving in. The tube feet at the end of, of the arms tend to be really elongate. Mm -hmm. You'll see that okay. in several stars. Um, and so uh, they're a little longer, and they're kind of out, probably detecting things. Um, but um, we're still not entirely sure what a lot of the basic uh, behavior of these animals uh, is like compared to, say, the, the shallow water species. Sure. But uh, yeah, I think that's probably what they do: is they're they're just extended. They're just feet, they're just part of the two foot, the two feet underneath, but sort of more a little more extended out to the to the tips. Okay, great. And how many species are in this genus worldwide? <laughs> that is a good question because <laughs> um, I think on paper there are, oh, I want to say something like 40 or 50. Okay. Yeah, but, Bridge. But the problem is that when they're collected, they're... Go ahead, Bridge. Um, Coming up on a uh, five meter soon. Because Thank the you, Bridge. skeletons are so soft. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times um, we don't actually understand if the characters being used to distinguish them are real or if they're, they're caused by the damage. I see. And they're so, when we started seeing them alive, they started showing so many different characters from when the, the preserved specimens, from what the preserved specimens look like, that that, that these things became uh, very complicated very quickly. See so, this video? Um, you know, uh, I've, I've seen many different oh. morphotypes around the world. And they get quite large, right. uh, you know, yes. but they can occur from the Arctic uh, to, uh, to while well, you're in the, the tropical Atlantic, you'll see them in the Pacific, uh, you see them in the Antarctic. Um, so they're everywhere, but they, they're only uh, cold water or deep sea animals. Very cool. Thank Chris, you. I want to ask you about the, um, the osculum again, the central part, yeah. uh, the hole there. Is, is there a... Anything indicative about the rate at which they expel material? Oh, <laughs> the, I think the most we know about the osculum is that it's there. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, yeah, I mean, those kinds of things would be uh, novel uh, you know, debris. Uh, we know very little about the actual biology of the animal. In fact, even the slime that it produces hasn't. Slime has been recorded for the shallow water. It's shallow water cousin, but... It's never actually been recorded, I think, in the literature for hymenaster. So, you know, a lot of this is stuff that I've personally experienced and, and so forth. It's right. still awaiting publication, so. Yeah, because when I first, I first saw these, um, I don't know, a year ago, and uh, it's like a minute ago, like 8,000 meters, and they were, um, I, I thought it might be an incurrent thing, but it's really an excurrent um, excretory Quick type thing. And so we were looking in videos for several well, many minutes watching the the frequency at which they expelled material. Oh, so, yeah, so we no, have I, it. I believe it. Um, yeah. I mean, it's not entirely clear what what direction you know the the fluid coming in and or out of it is going. Right. I, I just know that I've seen them pulse regularly, and the texture of the body in print species varies also, and conceivably that could have an effect on on whether or not you know you're seeing in or out flow from the osculum, um, and there are, there are a bunch of other things, like the two-foot rows. Um, some of them are a little different. They're different from one another. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, it, it gets, there's, there's a whole bunch of things 
every one of those is just a bitter trove of, of right. you know, there, some of them I think actually are supposed to so brew babies in, the, mm. um, in the, the sort of t- oh, circus tent, the, wide. what's called a super dorsal membrane that's Thanks. just kind of covering the surface. So. Oh, interesting. Hey, thanks a lot. Thank oh, yeah. you, Chris. I'll probably be calling yeah. again if they see something else. <laughs> Great, thank Very you. Polite. Okay, the train is. So that was Christopher up. Ma. He's at the Smithsonian Institution, and he is an expert in sea stars, all things East sea stars, and he has a really great blog site called Echino Blog. If anybody wants to check out, um, I think he made one many good points, but one, you know, noting that we don't know much about the behavior of a lot of these deep sea organisms, and so using tools such as ROVs and submersibles to actually visit the deep sea floor, we learn so much about the behavior, uh, coloration, real life coloration, you know, before these technologies, um, people studying the deep sea would send down dredges and trawls and box traps and things, and you know, bring up organisms to the surface, and a lot of times the organisms, as, as Chris mentioned, are pilots, damaged. So um, this kind of tool we really does give us a lot moving? of new information, and we're learning something new every every dive, every day. Yeah. I think so. Still south. Bridge. Go ahead, Nev. Zero point two knot. Bridge copy. Uh, please repeat that. Oh, could we have so a, depth of 3, could we have meters, a ship so move of fifty meters, one seven five degrees, zero point two knots? Good copy, 50 meters, bearing 175 at a uh, point. Uh, just to remind folks back at home, copy that. Thank uh, today you, is the second dive of Oceano Profundo. We um, are surveying an area just south of Mona Seamount or Mona Block in the Septentrional Fault. We are to the west of, of Puerto Rico. Chris, you want to swap out and fly for the second half of the watch? Sure, I wouldn't. Uh, okay, why don't you uh, take care of that and uh, So Jason Shader has just entered in the chat room that um, this may be the base of a slope debris apron. Well, let's get that taken care of. It's no not comfortable flying. It's very hard to tell, but the rock that's just disappearing out of the bottom corner, that had the morphology that perhaps could be a carbonate. Okay. Looks to be a larger example right ahead here. Thank you. Pilot, if you get a chance and can zoom in, it might we Certainly. might see something. Mm. 
Maybe if we could get some about a half of a zoom here. Michelle just pointed out that this rock is not as dark, and that was exactly what I was starting to think. Did it look lighter? Could you see um, a white carbonate coming through? But as we zoom in, it's not quite so clear. Guys, is this a, a piece of the carbonate that's rolled down the hill? Any thoughts? Thank you, Paula. You're welcome. Let's come wide again so they can see it in context. Everything around it's, uh, well, there's darker stains, smaller bits. The word, from, the word from the beach is nobody has a great idea. It just shows you how difficult it is trying to identify rocks by, um, you know, by video without being able to, as a geologist would, walk over there and hammer a piece off and look at it. Um, it's just very difficult to tell. Chris, could you uh, deploy the spectrometer, please? <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll have that sure. for you in a moment. Thank you, Father. You guys are great. <laughs> I guess we should proceed up the slope. I'm sure that's what you're doing. But yeah, we've adjusted the uh, speed of advance now that we're in steep terrain, and we're we're getting that tuned. One doesn't want to rush headlong at the mountain. Thank you. And uh, we are proceeding up. Hi, Carl. Hi, Dave. Right. Carl. It was a bit of Lawrence of Arabia slogging across the <laughs> desert, but we've we've gotten here. Yeah, I was watching that downstairs. Dave. Pilot Dave's description of our movement over soft sediment. Pilots, uh, we're back. Keep your move. I'm gonna just keep rolling. Yeah, this is uh, comfortable, speed comfortable speed here. Great. Uh, you're cutting in and out. Wiggle your microphone connector or something. Go ahead, Nav. Yeah, Bridge. We'd like to. Here's to this move. Okay, good copy. Thank you. At 50 meters, you said? Yes. Good job. Well, I couldn't hear you, Brian. But I guess they could. Yeah, there was a little drop out there for a second. Not sure what it was. Whether it was your headset or the button you were pressing. Oh, I'm getting ahead of you. I'm sorry, Carl. Pilots nav radio check. That is loud. Yeah. Clear. Pilots. It's loud, yeah. Before it was totally breaking out to silence. Pilot, can we just put on the lasers just to get a feel for the size of those things? Just Certainly. very quickly. Yeah. Uh, lasers on. There they are. Okay, let's get a little zoom, please, video for uh, scale here. We've got the lasers on. That's good right there. That's great. So Thank you. And if you'd like, we can leave them on uh, or off. It's your pleasure. Sometimes we turn them off for beauty shots, but it's... Um, I mean, if we can leave them on, but feel free to turn them off when you need. All right, we'll leave them on. Constant indication of scale and wide, please, video. 
And that's uh, 10 centimeters for the folks that just tuned in. Sorry, yeah, I'm having to crab quite a bit. Oh, with the there's current down here. Oh yeah. Which way is it going? Uh, it wants to take me to the left. If you would hang on just for a second, Carl, I need a break as well, and then I'll come and uh, sounds good. Take over for you. So maybe this is a good time for an update for um, people that might be listening. Um, we're currently diving in a large east-west trending valley, and we're traversing up, the, or we're at the bottom of a, a steepish slope um, on the southern side of the valley. And we're going south, traversing up that slope. And what we think the valley is, is the evidence for a big major strike slip fault that's several hundred kilometers long and almost certainly goes through the, the thickness of the Earth's crust. And this fault yep. is part of the plate boundary system between the North American plate to the north, which is moving to the west, and the Caribbean plate that's moving to the south. And one of the questions we're trying to uh, see if we can find any evidence for is why this fault might, might end, because the valley just terminates. And the question is why? Faults normally just don't stop. And so where might the fault go? Can we see any evidence by looking at the rocks? And that's one of the objectives of today's dive. So a piece of bamboo, maybe? So you're getting uh, blown to the right by the current? No. So. Uh, Are we zooming in on the, in the center? Yes. Great, yes. thank you. Uh, currents uh, west to east. OK, come uh, fill the frame there, video. Inch in on it. Oh, so you're getting more to the left. Yeah, correct. Okay. I see. Do we want to take a closer look at the associate wash leads? Yes, please. Roger. Another bamboo. Okay, you can start to come in, video. And another Bersingid sea star. It's like um, uh, after this. I'm so we did uh, see a uh, Bersingid yesterday during our dive, but this does look to be a different species. Uh, there's a ship move underway. So we're Copy. headed towards the hill, so we'll have to get lined up again. Yeah. Perhaps I'll this uh, is Novodinia? Get going here. Can you kill the lasers? Do we want to take a look at the center? Yes, please. Back around to the right. Uh, I'll fight the current here and then copy. Just tell me when I need to go, co-pilot. Okay. I would say just do this for. Yeah, about maybe focus on seconds. those little white okay. things on the bamboo. Okay, go ahead in. Hold there. White things on nice. bamboo too? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You keep coming video if you got it. I don't know if that. More limpets. Copy. And uh, we have to go watch these if you have okay. what you need here. This is fine, thank you. Okay. Come wide video. All right, so I've turned a bit towards you. Just mm. let the current take you left. Okay, copy that.
Uh, we lost um, connection with the chat room, and I was hoping to um, ask Michelle Scherer, who's Looks in like Puerto Rico, about uh, this dirt. bamboo Can that we're seeing. That? I'm under the impression that their bamboo is an introduced or invasive species Mike in this area. There. Um, there are several yeah. native species, but these larger bamboo structures that we're seeing is uh, invasive. Hello. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to, to sort of come real quick because while you guys were taking a, a nice look at that Brasingid, which looks like yeah, Trayella, you had a really nice macro shot of the stuff living on the wood. And it turns out, I think you actually saw a really rare deep sea sea star called Cayman of Stella. Oh, really? Exclusively on wood. Yeah. Okay, we missed that here. Okay, can you come in, video? Oh, yeah, well, that, that's why I'm at home staring at my computer screen <laughs> in the dark. Um, uh, I think in the future, one of the cool things to remember is that uh, there is, believe it or not, a whole field of study devoted to looking at um, aquafauna of deep sea wood. Absolutely. 3,000 meters or mm -hmm. so. So people who study, you know, the different clams and sea stars and, and whatnot, and there's a, <coughs> a lot of weirdos that live there, and the Okeanos has taken some fantastic images of the surface of a lot Need of these deep logs uh, from increase. Indonesia. Copy that. And if you could do so again for an extended period of time, especially if you're looking going, for small, uh, tiny little star-shaped uh, objects, here, would just make okay, my heart all go. Right, we'll do. In the future, okay. obviously, sure. the, you guys are on your way Let's to come by video. but I think you've done two or three sort of log shots. and. Every time I just look really closely at them, and this one, I'm bringing my head in the reaps later, I'll look through them again. But uh, some fantastic things Got there. That. So, thank okay. you. <laughs> yeah, sure. Thank you for calling in. I'll talk to you later. I'll center myself in your screen, assuming you're square. Yeah, it's coming around now. That looks good. Cool. Slope looks to be one six zero one five five thereabouts now. So we're continuing to traverse up this slope. Um, we're seeing sandy deposits with um, a whole range of um, yeah, rocks great. coming down with the sand, ranging in grain size from coming up on uh, five millimeters to um, probably up to about a meter, with um, a lot of examples which are maybe about 10 centimeters across these little rounded boulders are almost certainly falling down from above and forming a talus slope at the side of this structure which might well be a, a major fault scarp underneath this talus telescope slope all right pilots should, should we keep the train moving on the telecom line a snap zoom on these white objects video. Bridge RV nav. Thank you. Yeah. Looks like Go ahead, Dan. Trash. Could I request another ship move? Meters, one zero zero meters. One seven five degrees, zero point two knots. Oh, great. Hi, how are you? Meters bearing one seven five at point Thanks for joining. Good copy. Thank you. Can you come back in briefly, video? Thank you. Just hold there. Can you keep coming there? Ah, oh, just investigating. Ah, okay. Thank you. You can come wide. And a few more uh, plastic plates. Thought I saw something. Thanks. So, Jason, Uri, um, any thoughts on what we're seeing? Uh, yeah, I notice that the slope is very steep, but on the other hand, uh, still not rocky. So I wonder whether we are still in the volcanoclastic section below the carbonate platform. And 
it will be a while before we get there to some more clips, but who knows? Thanks, sir. Yeah, Roger. Jason, sorry, if, here, if yeah. you're feverishly typing, we've lost the event logger here, so unfortunately I can't see what you're typing. Is this what you saw, Andrea? Yeah, yes. Uh, so we have a Camachula crinoid here, another feather star. That's fine, thank you. Okay. Come, uh, come wide video and just kind of fill the frame with this rock that we're looking at. See if the geologists want to look at anything in particular. There's some staining. Thanks, Pilot. It's yeah, it's just very hard. I think if we, as far as we're concerned, we want to just try and progress up the slope. Okay. Copy that. I could guess. I could guess it's a piece of carbonate, but I'd be guessing. Can you come back in at the top of your video? I think there's. Keep coming. I'm not sure what that is. But Andrea would know. Yeah, I, if you can get a better zoom. Copy. Keep coming, video. It's like hydroid. Okay, thanks, video. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, definitely not a coral. Maybe hydroids covering something or a hydroid species. Anybody else have an idea? Uh, that's what it looks like to me. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for spotting that pilot. Sure. It's going up. We're at a depth of 3,577 meters. We are continuing upslope. Today is the 11th of April, 2015. I think I saw a sponge. If I can throw the brakes on here. If you want to snap zoom there, video. coming. I don't know if we uh, care about that or not, but come a little wide video. Thank you. Pilot, can you just throw on the lasers very quickly? Here they come. Thank you. Okay, you can come on video. Thanks. Kill the lasers, Dave. Okay. So, Andrea, can you hear me? Yeah, hello. Yeah, this is Chris Kelly. I'll, I'll take a stab at that. It looks like it's uh, an octanemid uh, tunicate. That would be my best guess on that. Thank you, Chris. Very 
Barry White's in our own series. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. There's a button for everything up here. So if that was a tunicate, um, just to give folks back at home an idea, it looks a lot like an invertebrate, but in fact it's uh, more closely related to us. It's a chordate, so it shares several characters, characteristics um, um, with uh, vertebrates. So it's a chordate. So, Pilot, um, just for fun, if, is there any chance we could just turn parallel to the slope just to get an idea of the dip of the slope, if that's at all safe to do? Sure. Let me uh, get out into the sand here. Is that a coral? Uh, can we take a look at the whips on the rock before we move? Sure. Would you like left or right first? The right's fine. Come in video. Oh, there's two down here. The sponge stocks. Could you get in any closer? Sure. Oh, come. It's got uh, comb like. There's a little. There's a tiny little starfish on the rock above it. Looks like a barnacle as well above. Come wide video. Oh yeah, uh, yeah small brittle star. Come wide video. Not sure what that is. If it's a, it looks like sponge either. If it's a stock or. Yeah, stand by one. Watch so you don't set that up. Clatterize it or something. It looks, it looks alive. It does look alive. I would think it looks like a sponge to me. Yeah, a really bizarre sponge. Okay, go back in video. Get a little more light on it. But I mean, do you see like glass spicules coming off? No, I know in uh, the canyons work in the North Atlantic, we have seen um, clatterized sponges, but they are a lot smaller usually. I don't know if this could be one of those as well. Yeah, no idea. I do think it's a sponge though. Um, I just got a screen capture. I can try to send this Henry. Great, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think you. it's a sponge too. Yeah, I agree. Do you want to go back in, uh, Andrea? Or I think that's good. I think we got what we need. Thank you. Sure. The, uh, okay. Come wide, video. Come up a little bit and then get the. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Slope. Thanks, video. Jason, just got back into the event log and reading your comments, and yes, I'd agree totally. Um, it really does look like there's um, different depositional events um, uh, and, and sediment, uh, multiple deposition of, of sediments across the talus slope, and that we're looking at some sort of debris fan. your uh, port swing arm. Right. Okay, watch lead. Yeah, go ahead. Here's a view of uh, 
sort of across the slope here if you wanted to. Thank you, Pilot. Venture a guess at what that slope is. What's your guess? What's your guess? I don't know. It looks to be 45. 45 or so. Yeah. Maybe 40. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. We could do it again here the other way in a couple minutes. So. I think if we get a chance, what we're trying to get up to is, you know, the rocks above the debris slope. So sure. that's our objective. But thank you, that was great. We're at a depth of 3,549 meters, continuing our transect upslope. So watch leads, this is ROV nav. Sure. Um, looking at the bathymetry collected last night, it looks like it's, okay, it's this slope for 700, 800 meters. I mean, I don't know if that's indicative of of what you're looking for geologically or not, but then then maybe eight or nine hundred meters out, it starts to you get it gets a fair amount steeper for the last three hundred meters of elevation gain. I don't know if you can pull up high pack back there and look at those contours, but just the 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 map seems to suggest we'll have this for. Uh, Eight or nine hundred meters, which would be at this speed three hours or so. Okay. So it should take us through. You know, we're off bottom time right now is estimated at four o'clock. Thank you, pilot. That's good to know. Um, I have no idea whether it's possible, but if it, you know, if it is really going to be more of this stuff for a long time, if it was possible to get up to the steeper part, that would be desirable. All right, well, let, um, I, we can't tell you, I can't tell you what it, I can just tell you what we're looking at on the contours, that it looks pretty consistent for quite some time, just contour-wise, which I'd let the geologist know, or decide it's the same. No, thank you, I mean, that's useful to know, that's great. Do and we have a um, Uri and Jason? Do you have any preference? I mean, up as uh, quickly as we can. To watch these. It might be pretty challenging with an hour and a half. It might be pretty challenging. To, to get that far anyway. Okay, and we couldn't jump off and, and go up either. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think it, you know, it would take, it, take at least an hour. Okay. If we end up running long, you'd end up losing what we well, do have, you know? Okay. Let me know if you see anything biological video on your monitor. I'm just Thank you, Paula. Understood. I'm just traversing. Did you Pilot, radio check. Can you hear me? Got you, Nav. Nope, now I don't got right. you. Yeah, you're cutting in and out. All right, maybe I need to go back to the earmuffs. Yeah, it's when you touched your boom, then you then you came back in. Nav bridge. Might be something loose, loose there. Want to go in here, video? Yeah, bridge, Nav. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Uh, 
coming up on five meters. Yeah, let's I, I'm go ahead and do another hundred meter uh, move. Same yeah. course, for one seven five degrees, zero point two knots. Good copy. Do we want to look at any of those? In that uh, species detail? we. Uh, no, that's okay. Our goal is to continually move up slope, so go ahead, just zooms are good unless it's something different. Okay. I think we observed the species Maybe this is the well. one they had the problem with. I wasn't in here when they did, but... Copy that, Andrew. I think that's a little, little different to fill the crab is that the sponge, I think, is in the family Pereidae. The sponge above the... the I have a spare process. back here I can try. Yeah, I'll put a, something in the event log. Okay, I thank you. I it was working. Great. Thanks, Chris. Sure. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Pilot. Thank you, Video. Sure. You can, uh, do you, did you want to get him a little more video or? No, that's, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Can you come wide then? Yeah, watch well, the uh, video. wanted to get a little bit of a closer look for, uh, some beauty shots. So I'm going to set that up while we're waiting to get up slope a little more and then I'll sprint out ahead. Okay. That sounds fine. Thank you. Copy. Okay, co come on in. You want to take my tilt, co-pilot? Got it. And zoom as you wish, uh, video. <laughs> Just took off. Just jumped off. Looking the ledge, at a yeah. Munidopsis squat lobster. Type of decapod crustacean. Type of decapod crustacean. Whoa. Oh. See its swimming behavior. Okay. Come on, yeah. Okay. Sure thing, there he is. <laughs> He's coming at you. Okay, let's get up ahead here. He's not gonna let you go without a fight. Uh, still on my toes there. Get off me. There go. Thank you, co-pilot. Okay, we're continuing to move upslope. Depth is five, three, five, three, two. Fresh face of a rock there. And we lost the event log again. So, show best team, please keep putting stuff into the event log because we lose it very frequently. Can we get a snap zoom on the biology on the rock on the right? Sure. Start to come in video. Yeah, you're running out of tether there. If you yeah. That's, that's another sponge. Is, is that the same uh, we observed uh, just a little bit ago, Chris? The furry a day? No, it's not. This is a dead uh, ferronomatid. It's so okay. probably in the genus Polyopagon. Okay, great. Thank you. Is that good, actually? That's great. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Chris, I wish you could do the same for the rocks. Identify them so well. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, thank Sorry. you, Lydia. Uh, luckily for me, a lot of these things are familiar to what we have out here. You can tell it's a parent added by the very 
the, uh, to the filamentous base. It has a filamentous attachment to surfaces, unlike a lot of other sponges. And sponges, of course, are some of the oldest animals uh, on the planet. They've been around for at least 700 million years. They are, in fact, animals. To explain to viewers and listeners what we um, are likely looking at is that we um, took the ROV down to the bottom of a valley and we've been traversing up the southern wall of that valley and what we're almost certainly on is a big debris slope. So a big talus debris slope that sits probably at the bottom of some relatively exposed cliff. And the big face was created by a fault um, which allowed the material on the lower side to fall down from, um, from higher up and all these blocks are just rolling down the hillside and making a big debris pile on the side of the slope. Earlier we measured yeah. the dip of the slope. It's dipping at about 40 degrees, which is pretty close to Stuck the video. angle of repose of Not these rocks and sediments. Beyond that, they just fail and they roll further down the hill. I'm starting to go off audio here. There's uh, guys mowing our lawn outside. It's going to get really noisy really fast. Okay, thank you. Okay, sorry. Talk to you, talk to you later. Okay. Uh, later. You can keep going, pilot. Okay. Thanks. Copy, thanks. Snap zoom here, video. Hold there. What, what are you looking at, pilot? Uh, just whatever's blowing in the breeze here. Oh, okay. Yeah, a lot of plant debris. Yeah. Okay. You can uh, come wide now, video. Thanks. Might be a small enemy in the sand here. Right there. If you want to go in for that. Okay, we have. Oh, this is cool. This is a hermit crab um, that actually has an, an anemone on its back instead of a, yeah. a shell. Yeah, go ahead. Catch your tail. Go ahead, uh, Dave. Got it. Two shall pass. Very cool. I think this may be a Parapagris species. Oh, he doesn't like that. You can zoom as you wish, video. Just try to track it.
So we often see this species of hermit crab um, in the deep sea uh, with instead of a shell and an anemone on its back for protection. Okay. And I'm catching up to you here. Copy that. Go up and over this rock here. Cheerios is hot there, video. It's quite a big uh, rock feature coming up. Indeed. Again, they look like loose boulders, but really quite big ones. But maybe we're getting close to some outcrop. Catch up to you, dear. You're fine now. <laughs> Looking 45. Copy. Okay, we're at a depth of 3,495 meters. We're currently about 50 miles northwest of the western um, side of Puerto Rico, just south of Mona Seamount or Mona Block. What's our contour interval on high pack there? 10 meters. Thank you. Agrees uh, surprisingly with the altimeters of the two so vehicles. So, Uri, if you're still listening, would you like to fill in us about the general geology around here? Where does Mona Block come from? And what's this big fault that we're trying to look at? So pilots will just um, keep rolling. The fault itself is the Septentrional Bridge fault, Arvino. which in Spanish means northern. Uh, uh, and it extends from Go ahead, here. Uh, yeah, Bridge, could we add another 100 meters to this move, please? North Copy. North. We have uh, 25 meters and left. Copy that. Okay. Thank you. Fault, which is along the southern shore of Cuba. And it continues there to the Mid-Cayman Ridge, where rise from which it uh, jumps south about 100 kilometers and in. continues mm -hmm. westward mm -hmm. and all the way to um, in okay. Guatemala, Honduras, and then it ends basically in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, that's the boundary along which North America moves mostly westward with respect to the Korean, uh, to, uh, to the Caribbean plate. But it's not the only plate boundary because there is a small component of convergence in which North America, the North America uh, tectonic plate is moving under the Caribbean. That part of it is being taken in the trench, which here is about say, 50 to 60 kilometers and north of us uh, at a depth of about 8,000 meters. Uh, along part of it, there are big earthquakes, both earthquakes in the trench itself and earthquakes along the Septentrional Fault. 
uh, along with Septuagint and Fault, there have been perhaps very large earthquakes every 300 years. The last one may be, although it is debated, happened in 1842 and caused uh, death and damages. Unfortunately, the second largest city of the Dominican Republic sits right on top of that fault. Um, the Septuagint fault and here, I think uh, you mentioned and other people mentioned, uh, in a very unusual form. Generally, uh, when formation ends, it starts being diffused and spread around in more folds, and slowly in each fold there is less and less deformation, less and less slip, until it more or less kind of disappears. Uh, in this particular case, uh, it ends very abruptly in a hole. Uh, we don't quite understand why this is. One reason may be because there is a change in the uh, geometry of the ongoing North American uh, plate underneath uh, where we are standing from a normal subduction, a normal down going slab to the west of us to some unusual phenomena perhaps related to a tear in the slab to the east of us. But that is pure, you know, speculation because we are not aware of other places around the world like that, so we don't really know uh, yet, and we haven't modeled it to see how this could really form. Uh, Mona block north of us uh, is a piece of the old uh, rocks that build up the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. On top of it, there is a carbonate platform that is uh, now at the depth of about a thousand meters or so. Uh, interestingly enough, it has been also going down or subsiding because the age of it, if I recall, is a million years or so. Uh, we don't quite understand why there is a separation. Perhaps the separation is be because of the fault. Mm. Well, what else can I say about it? Um, let me stop here, perhaps. Thank you, Uri. That was great. Um, but the Mona block itself, am I right in understanding that it's it's um, uh, blueschist rocks? So. Um, uh, high pressure, low temperature rocks formed as a plate was pushed down underneath? Uh, that is correct. The question is uh, how old it is. Yeah, and it uh, there used to be a very large subduction zone going on here from probably 150 million years ago until 40 or 50 million years ago which built Cuba and the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico, although the geometry was slightly different than that. So on Samana Peninsula, for example, in the Dominican, northern Dominican Republic, you will also find blue schist from, and it's probably from this time, uh, pro probably earlier than 60 or 70 million years ago. Uh, the uh, in the subduction zone, or the Caribbean kind of jammed into the Bahamas platform and into Florida about 60 or 70 million years ago, and for a while subduction tried to go on before it was totally abandoned and the relative motion became more east-west along what is now the Septuagint Trinal Fault. So it can simply be what we see there in the Mona block can simply be a block that has been uh, uh, remnant from that time and has been either pushed up at some point or maybe brought down at some point or maybe both of them happened, you know, at different times. Thank you, Uri. Sure. Thanks, Harry. That was great. Can you start to start to zoom video?
bio break anybody? So this looks like uh, the sponge that we were um, imaged just a, a little bit ago. Come on, video. I'll go to the next one. It'd be a little easier for me. Okay, thank you. And there's another one on the left as well. Yeah, that's... Uh, Okay, here's another no, one. I was still moving. That's my uh, moment. I'm sorry. Another sponge, possibly a cladorizid. Thank you, pilot. Okay, you can uh, come in a little bit video. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Just while we're here, can we also zoom in on the rock just below the sponge? Sure. Just tell me when, do you got time? It's not. We're happy here. Okay, come on in, video. Try to get the base and the and the. Uh, Rock underneath it. There you go. Just hold there. Yeah, and if oh, you can come a little wide. pan down. Come a little more wide. Yeah, right there. All the way, all the way down, uh, Washley. Down, down a little bit if that's possible. Yeah. Okay. That's a little um, crinoid, I think, on the l left there. Right there, watch leader more. Further down, watch leader, right here. That's that's good, thank you. Time to go. You okay. zoom in maybe on the crinoid. Uh, I've been informed it's time to go. Okay. Get a quick zoom thank you, crinoid, great. But, uh, uh, it's not happening. Come on. Looking 80 Thank degrees you. at you. It's probably, <laughs> probably time. Sorry about that video. That was uh, not current. That was my momentum. My mistake. Not as much uh, current from the west anymore, is there? Mm -mm. No, there isn't. Not much at all, actually. Mm -hmm. I wonder what our temperature change has been. I wonder if that was deep cold water that was moving. Yeah. How's that starboard lower swing arm working out? Was there an issue? Oh, well, it's got the craft in the way, and we limited its uh, travel. 
Ah. Well, we haven't. So, just to recap to people listening on shore, um, we're traversing up Unless this. Unless you have no comments, then. This steep slope, which is dipping at about 40 degrees towards the bottom of the valley. Um, the slope consists of this sediment that you can see, this sand-sized sediment with all sorts of bigger rocks ranging in size from nice centimeters to Did several that, meters. Did uh, that DC bus return fault squeeze out? Or did we identify a culprit? The geologists on shore have been talking about what this actually is. Is it actually just sediment that's been pouring down a, a rocky slope and filling in all the gaps between the rocks and covering it so the, the jutting out rocks are basically acting as collecting spaces for the sediment? Or is it uh, a, a, a classic debris flan? Um, I think the consensus is it's very much a steep slope which is just collecting sediments as they pour off the top and run down the side of this slope. Our hope is to continue up and start to find outcrop which might tell us a little bit more about what's underneath these things. Um, the rocks themselves, as you can see, are often black. That's this iron manganese coating that's so ubiquitous on rocks under the ocean. And it makes it very hard to identify the actual rock types. So what we're always looking for is, is to try and find a rock that doesn't have this coating. We can see the actual color inside. And there we go. I think we've got another piece of debris. Piece of paper or plastic. So the other thing we've seen a lot on this dive is 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 pieces of, of rubbish that people have perhaps thrown over the side of ships and pieces of paper and plastic dishes and all sorts of things. It's part of what you find when you explore the bottom of the oceans. Andrea's just returned to us, and I bet everybody's dying to tell her all the exciting things she missed. Did I miss a lot of different fish species and corals? Bridge Rovina. Sorry, all I needed nice. to take a, just a little sugar break, sugar get break. some water, have a cookie. They made cookies at lunch today. A bridge. It's actually pretty good. Could we add 200 meters to pretty this? Pretty good move? cookie. Absolutely, 200 meters, bearing 175 at point two knots. Good copy. Thank you, Bridge. No problem. I noticed, um, that Mike, I just caught the tail end of your narration, and you were talking about um, a lot of plastic uh, trash. And, yeah, we have seen a lot of trash on this dive, more so than yesterday, although we did yesterday see a lot of Coke cans and things. Um, today, a lot of plastic plastic trash. And just kind of want to remind folks at home, you know, if you can, <laughs> this is my plug, reduce uh, your use of plastics and other types of um, waste, that's great. You know, a lot of it ends up here, uh, the bottom of the deep sea floor. And it lasts for a long time. And we're at a depth of 3,434 meters. I think we still have a few uh, folks online. I, I don't think I've mentioned yet today who all has been with us. Um, in the chat room, we have uh, Amy Bacco-Taylor and Chris Kelly. Uh, we have Jason Chater, uh, Mike Vecchione, Michelle Scherer, 
and uh, Uri Tenbrink and Tim Shank and Taylor Heil, both in the chat room and on the phone with us, as well as Chris Kelly. Um, and then, of course, uh, people at the Interspace Center in Rhode Island, Catalina Martinez, and all the folks here on the ship um, helping us. We couldn't do these operations without um, everybody's hard work and planning for this expedition, including the scientists and the other folks on shore, um, and the pilots in this room, the videographers, and of course the ship crew. So thanks to everybody for making uh, these dives possible, this ocean exploration possible. You want to do a partial on this uh, future here video? Let's see if we can see anything interesting as we zoom in. Thank you, Pat. Partial. That's, that, I mean, if we could zoom in, that would be great. That could be carbonate showing through the manganese crust. Okay. Let me know when you're ready for more. Yeah, keep coming. Partial. Got it. Just hold it there. I'll let geology I mean, tell me uh, where to go from there. Thank you. That looks good. Jason Yuri, any thoughts? If it is at all possible to zoom in a little bit more at the bit that's directly in the center now, the Go ahead, video. this here. That's great. Washington. Up a little bit. That's great. Just there. Ah. <laughs> Probably gonna have to drive down closer to get yeah. back to work, Chris. Thank yeah. you. That's I'll it. pull back a bit. Yeah, thanks. Do you want to go full? Thank you. That's great. Come full wide. You got it. Full. Think about the uh, so yeah. Moment over um, there. What that we were trying to do there was to get close enough to see if we can see the interior structure of that rock. And Jason just kind of confirmed what I was trying to think: was this in any way brecciated? Is it a conglomeratic or a breccia rock made of li of reasonably sized pieces that are maybe one or two centimeters across that are all cemented okay, together? Come back in quickly. Can we quickly turn on the lasers? Laser's coming. There you go. There. there. That's Just great. Field of view. Thank you. That's great. So you can see there the lasers are 10 centimeters apart. So I was looking at the grains in that white face, Come and you could see that they're about a centimeter okay, across. Thanks. We're still partial. Thank you, guys. That's great. Pulled up here. There's no more current. So might have to adjust the Z-bias a little bit. Okay, come back in one more time, video. Thanks. It's partial. Copy. Just hold there. Keep coming. Actually. Oh yeah. Well, it almost looks. That's that's great. Thank you. It really does look like it might be a, a, a breccia of some sort. Do you agree, Jason? Huh. What is this uh, mineral that looks almost opaque or calcite there? Sorry, Uri, what is this mineral that looks almost... Uh, you know, pull it's back. almost yeah, kind of on. Uh, opaque your, or glassy. Toes. Right. Yeah. The sort of pale white looking That's stuff. Cool. I, I, I don't know. Could it be, I mean, pieces of carbonate or could it be pieces of quartz? Is calcite a possibility? It certainly looks like a brecciated rock, I think. I mean, we can take another picture of that fairly stable, maybe. Removing. I mean, my best guess would be that it's a carbonate breccia. We have to go, Copilot. It's very soon, yes. 
great down well, thank you Potter that was great uh, let's keep going thank you copy four copy thanks so we are continuing to move up slope that situation Chris one of the things you can do is you can use your verts as a tilt put just enough uh, axial ahead to keep your toe on the, on the cliff yeah I didn't want to uh, uh, hit the swing arms again little attached fauna or colonizing fauna on these uh, rocks we have observed just a few sponges um, Nowhere near the densities we observed yesterday uh, on the first dive, but a few um, different species here. However, not very common. Another piece of trash. I didn't know if it was too steep to put my toe in and then. The rock was a little high for that. Too. Pilot, can you zoom on the the rock? Sponges. On the sponges. Sure. Okay, coming in video. So there are some researchers that are looking at sponges in the deep sea um, for isolating particular compounds from sponges to be used in biomedical research and particularly cancer research. Uh, on the sponge on the right, you can see it looks like an anemone and uh, another comatulid crinoid on the top of the sponge. And these are two different glass sponges. Um, Chris Kelly, uh, do you have an idea on these? Have we, we, have we seen these yet? I don't think so. The anemone? The anemone or the sponge? That sponge looks new. Tim, do you see any associates? Dave, if you want to take my tilt, I'll just try to put my toe down. Got it. can go for the anemone, anemone here. Video. Yeah, we have two. Top, top. Track the like two anemones. About four. Tilt down. Five. Yeah. Keep coming if you got a video. That's full. Copy. Need to be thinking about making a move here. Okay. Can you pan down briefly? And to the right. Over here. Yep, there it is. Pieces of sargassum um, on the sponge. Uh, a little worm or something. What is that? The edge there. Uh, is that an isopod? It's pink. Okay, we gotta go. Okay, copy. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Cool. See how the tether. That's why I was having trouble f staying down. I think there's an up uphill current.
We have not observed any deep water corals this dive. We saw a few individuals yesterday of the same species of bamboo coral. Um, but today, is that a fish on the left? Yeah, let's go. Ooh, look. Looks like a deep sea lizard fish. Or a plastic spoon. Leaning more towards fish. So, Andrea, as we approach the fish, can we then use the um, absence of corals on, to tell Andrea. us anything about the slope or in the environment? Um, yeah, let me on answer there. that in a minute. Um, just while we have this on the screen, this is a Bathysaurus lizardfish, um, likely in, in the, the Bathysaurus mollus. We have observed uh, this species in the North Atlantic canyons as well. Okay, zoom, uh, zoom as you wish, video. You can take my camera, do you? The close zoom, you can see the lateral line really well, sensory organ of the fish. I'll try to get the head there. I'm guessing with the reflection back in the eyes, um, it's used to pick up more more light. Um, second fish of the day. Look at the Sirius view. Yeah, I see that. Three little whatevers. Anything else here? Watch That's lead? good. Thank you. Okay. Come on. So back to your question, Mike, uh, with deep sea corals, we're still really learning about the distribution of deep water corals, why uh, cool. they may be present okay, in so absent in some areas. With currents, deep sea corals are often found in areas of, of strong currents. They need to feed um, from things coming down in the water column from plankton and, and such. So they're usually found in strong current areas. Now we're seeing more and more that there may be a tighter link with uh, the underlying stability of the geology um, with um, corals, but that's kind of a working hypothesis. Some of these explorations, particularly in the past Looking couple of down. years, have really led yeah. us to start thinking that, okay. you know, here, if these features aren't very stable, then may here. not allow for successful recruitment and there may be a lot of mortality uh, for, for deep water corals, but that's just one hypothesis. Okay, keep Thank you, Andrea. Oh, there. Oh, I much time here. Yeah, there's a squat lobster behind one of them there. I see a couple of these. Oh, uh, yeah, the middle. Claws. If you lateral over to the right, there's something uh, about a meter away as well. Copy that. Okay, laterally right. There's another fish, unless it's the same one to my left here. Come I on. Followed you. Come on. Same one? Yeah. Yep, that's the same one. Is that the same individual? Well, or just that we don't know, but uh, there's only one in the neighborhood. You want to we have a couple different sponge species on the underside of this rock. And that's the other one I was seeing okay. from here. Come in on that video, just briefly. Pass. Five more seconds and then come wide video. Thanks. I gotta go up and over this feature. Or around Full. to the right. Or around it, yeah.
want to check this out, Andrea? Sorry, yes. I'm looking at the chat log right now. Seen this guy before, I believe. But keep coming, video. Any area in particular, Andrea? So this is another sponge in the family. Let me see if I can get this right. Pheromonidae. Okay, keep coming. That's video. good. Thank you. Come Full. back in video, actually. You want to go in? Come back in. This is a subject on the left on the rack yeah, of interest. Yeah. Come back wide a little. That guy. Uh, yeah, that's another tunicate, I think. Can we get a zoom on the sure. organism on the bottom Dave. left? Zoom as you wish, if you got it. It's full. Copy. So we're looking at another tunicate here. Um, I'm not sure if I caught the, the name of this um, from earlier. Did anybody catch that? I think, Chris, you had identified it. Is that enough for an ID there, Ashley? Yes, thank you. Okay. Let's get him up. Full. Copy, thank you. And we're at a depth of 3,369 meters. So the tunicate um, that we just observed is actually carnivorous, so eating um, different organisms out of the water column. Is that wood video? Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, it looks like zoom. another piece of wood. If we can zoom in on that. Copy. The other thing you can see as we zoom in are these downslope debris trails ahead, of uh, coarse grained and then finer grained material as these things ahead, are just running down the slope. Dave. Yeah. Go ahead, take it. Yeah, go ahead, NVIDIA. That looks like another piece of bamboo. And uh, bamboo is an introduced species. Um, it was brought, it was introduced by the Spanish in the 18th and 19th centuries, actually. So this would not have been a native plant grown um, in, in Puerto Rico. There's a little brittle there star are, to the left. Oh, is there? On the black rock, I think. Oh, yeah, small brittle star on the left on the rock. It's full zoom. Copy. I think we've seen them. Anything in particular on the bamboo, actually? If we could just take one 
kind of pan up it and look closely to see sure. if there are any sea stars or um, Chris Ma pointed out right he was really there. interested in that. Try to get the bottom and then get out of here. Yeah. Uh, Amy Baco Taylor just spotted an isopod. Did we get a close enough view of it? Another possible limpet? Yeah. Actually, come back up the uh, to the yeah. right a little bit. Yeah, the isopods up here past the yeah. on the right. Yeah, let me uh, rotate right back to out here. Oh, there it is. And we're running out of time. Copy. Great, thank you. Roger, come on. Thanks, video. Cool. Copy. Did you turn the strobe on, Dan? Uh, yeah, just taking a few. Okay. Pictures of the still cam. Copy. Something went through my life pool. Yeah, there he is. Another swimming holothurian. Transparent body you can see Go right ahead, to video. its insides. I think we've got him a couple times, but we can, can see the gut all coiled. Oh. He's coming at the me. Intestine. Yeah. Oh, doing ballet. You're a full light. Copy. He's coming at me. <laughs> Thanks. Keep going up. Today is the 11th of April, uh, local time 1522, UTC 1922. This is our second dive of the expedition. Um, we are just uh, south of Mono Block, Monocino area in the septentrional fault. Do a snap zoom there, video. Just figure out what this is. Partial. Looks Another like piece trash. of trash. Yeah. And steel can. Okay. You come in a little bit more, see if there's anything on it we want to look at. Otherwise, we Pilot, can we just put on the lasers to get a size of the rocks as well? Sure. Thank you. Sure. Okay, come on, video. You got it. Thanks. It's full. Copy.
like a squat lobster out in the middle here. Yeah, can you zoom on the white? Yeah. Looks like another uh, white squat lobster, Munidopsis species. Piece of wood right underneath. Take that again, Dave. Oh, oh. wrong button. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> there we go. The button is right next to the laser button. Apologies. <laughs> Shrimp uh, swimming by. A shrimp photo bomb. It's hard to bring out the sargassum out. stuck on its antenna. What's a really great video, you can see all the texture of the squat lobster, even the rostrum, which is often used for identification of squat lobsters to a uh, species. Watch lead, is there a, is there something that comes out of, like, between the tail and the carapace? Yeah, what is that? It's a... It almost looks like a tube sticking out of there. Oh. Well, let me see. Yeah. You got any more, Dan? Uh, we're at full. Copy. I don't know. I've never noticed that before. That's pretty interesting. I give it one tilt up to you. Uh, parasit parasitic. Oops. Appears to be something. I'm just, I wonder, is there one on the other side? Can you, um, try to look? Can you make that squat lobster turn? <laughs> well, we can try to rotate, come yeah. a little bit wide. Video? Just keep an eye on his co pilot. Yeah. Do you want to go full? Just uh, for reference? That's fine right there. <coughs> okay, we're at partial. Copy. Lost the chat room again. It's just trying to chat to uh, Amy and Chris. They either one okay, has observed again. that before. Come in. Keep coming. There's one on the other side as well. Yeah. It's crazy. Pipes. That one looks like it has another extension now. Down. Is it a tube or is it just a flat? Well, looks more flat. I wonder if it's the last. Is there another pair of legs that are folded forward when he's he or she is tucked up like that? How much time we got here, Dave? Oh, not a lot. Suggestion maybe a, sp a sperm packet? I don't know. It's on both sides. It's probably. About time I've never to move. noticed that on squat lobsters yeah. before. I guess we'll, we Pulling have great right. imagery. We'll send it to a squat lobster expert. Thanks, 
see if they can tell us anything about it. Good eye, Brian. I've caused wild speculation. <laughs> So here we're traversing up the slope again and we're seeing more of these sediment rills, these um, downslope alignments of the coarser grain sediment. Up, up. So that's Squat Lobster. We got a couple of people um, back on shore and this makes a lot of sense that they were probably the last pair of legs that were broken. Looks like a shrimp. Oh, that one up there. Just a rock. Pilot, just a rock. Uh, not just a rock. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen holothurians. Geologists love rocks. Yeah. Earth tones. They're usually purples. And I thought it was a dark purple. Reds. Bridge, ROV Nav. Hello, ROV Nav. Hello, Bridge. We'd like to extend this move another 200 meters. And we're at a depth of 3,310 3, meters. High. Bearing 175 at point two knots. That is correct. All right. Thank you, Bridge. So if Uri is still listening, another question for Uri. One of the things we talked about is whether all this sediment is just filling in the holes of the rock. Is there any chance that's why um, the fold appears to terminate, i.e. sediment has filled in where the um, south slope and the north slope meet and we no longer see a valley? I think we've seen plenty of this. Uh, no, because we have uh, seismic lines over there, and um, uh, they don't seem to show what it's just filled in, because otherwise it would have been filled in, filling in like uh, 1,500 meters or so. It would have been quite a thick layer there. Thank you, Uri. That sounds like a good answer. Andrew, I think we've uh, seen enough of these. Yeah, um, okay. thank you. Sure sponge and then the tunicate on the left, the carnivorous tunicate. Full. So these are Thanks, predatory. Uh, they capture um, organisms in the water column and kind of shut the, the hood of the top of the tunicate and um, will stay like that until um, they have digested that food and then eat again. And a fun fact, they are um, often uh, simultaneous hermaphrodites, so each animal can produce, you know, both eggs and sperm. So if, if conditions aren't quite right, or, you know, we've seen three so far on this dive, but they don't seem to be very abundant, so they're not very close to one another, um, the tunicates can then um, actually reproduce by, by themselves. What's our time off bottom this afternoon? Not sure. You got a in here video? Sure. Four o'clock. I saw something orange. Yeah, hold there. Mike, another part of your answer is that uh, yeah, I don't think so. the reason on. why there is a trench along the fold is that the Come on. Come on. fold yeah, gouge uh, makes uh, the area around it uh, pretty broken and uh, subject to erosion. So if the fold had continued, there is no reason why it's full gouge do a quick, quick and video the change. erosion would not have continued to the east. Thank you, Yuri. Again, another good answer. That 
this could be more of those uh, what we were trying to get earlier. I can see if I can settle up on it a little nicer than last time. Yeah, thank you, Paula. If we could just zoom in there. One thing you can do is try pushing ahead more than down, and then you won't have so much tilt. Once, once you get your toes in. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, video. Come in. Start to come in. Roger, zooming. Got your tilt. Yeah, thank you. And I think on the corner down here. Keep coming. Uh, did you see a better spot to start zooming? Anybody? No, it all seems yeah. pretty uniform. Okay. It looks kind of similar. Right. Jason, Yuri, any thoughts? Or type in event log. I lost my toe there. Full zoom. Copy. What come, were we looking for? a little for more you? wide here. Is it one Pulling of the rocks out, we looked at earlier was this brecciated rock, which was Keep made coming. up of, say, uh, one centimeter size class. Okay. And so the question was, Holding. is that a similar Holding. rock to that? I was just wondering uh, earlier about the clear... Okay, uh, come back in. Middle Zooming out. We saw whether it could have been quartz. Yeah, yes, Yuri. The, I mean, it, I'm trying to send you a picture, but it kind of looks there. like that. Oh. Pilot, oh. can we turn on the lasers as well? Lasers coming. They're out of the frame right now. We'll Keep tilting up. Coming up. There you go. Coming up. Pilot, can we turn on the lasers? They are on. They are oh. out of the field. Out of view. Ah. Uh, sorry. Can we, can we back it? out a little bit? We can get the Point lasers out. in the shot. Point out the lasers. Uh -huh. There you go. That's great. Thank you. Do you want to zoom on anything in particular here, Wesley? I think that's good. I mean, again, okay. it looks like this conglomeratic rock that we saw earlier, but it's so hard to tell because the brown is clearly covering the what the greens are actually made of. Okay. You can come wide video. Oh, I die. We in an upwelling here, pilot? Everything, every time I land now, everything goes up hill, so I assume. Roger that. It wasn't like that when Dave started, so. No, I had a strong Something changed. from the west. Uh, you have more of an upslope yeah. situation. We're at a depth of 3,298 meters. It's a floaty. Piece of wood or something on your right? More pieces yeah, of wood? I see that. Bamboo? Go check it out. And another squat or something up uh, above that as well. Up to the right? Yeah. yeah. Let's see if I can set up way down of this one. Okay, Dave, you want to give it a tilt? Oops. Push this right. <laughs> That's the one. Okay, go ahead and zoom video. Zooming eye. I'm going to go snap in for focus. Yeah, and it, you're going to get hit with a little bit of cloud here. Yeah, a little cloud. <laughs> Is that wood? That? I would say it's wood if you look at the far right side. Yeah. Kind of hard to see. Yeah, it seems to have a green. Can I get twist. the whole thing in the frame? Yeah. It does seem to have a twist. It also looks like it's been eaten.
good on that? I think so, yeah. Roger, Come coming on. out. Thank you. And we are 4-1. Pushing ahead worked a little better there, Dave. But the dust cloud is... Uh, so in this situation, if you needed to get the ultra beauty shot, we'd fold up uh, the swing arms on one side and you'd yeah. perch on your side. Is that of interest coming up, Mike, to you or Uri? Looks a little different to me, just different if coating on the rock. <laughs> yeah, if we can zoom in, that would be great. I mean, okay. Go ahead, again, Andrea, Roger, it's hard to tell, but maybe we've knocked off some of the manganese and we're actually seeing the carbonate inside. Holding. Okay. Keep coming. Still pushing. Thanks. So we're at a depth of 3,280 meters. Bring my levels down. So what we're trying to see here Locks is like the lighter areas giving us the interior color of the rock that some of the darker covering has broken off and it's we can see zoom, inside it. Feels good. Um, Copy, yeah. it. Could be a carbonate. Uri, Jason, what are your thoughts? Jason Shader wrote in the chat uh, room that this is carbonate. Looks like it's bounced down the hill and thanks guys scarred a bit. Thanks, pilot. I guess one of the key things are there little um, burrows in the on the right on there, yeah, the little sure. holes. You can keep coming here. Yeah, coming in. Is that a okay, just stand by pan down. down just a little bit? It's a full okay. zoom. Is that a is that an ancient burrow that was just in the limestone and is weathering out? Thanks, guys. That's great. We're done here, Washley? Yes, thank okay. you. Thanks, Jason. Jason Chater just emailed, no just entered into Four the uh, event log and said it looks like a, the kind of framework morphology you'd expect in uh, a limestone forming in a in a reef environment. That's so that could well pilot. be a chunk Traffic of the life, limestone escarpment that's fallen down the hillside. Ari just asked did the rock fall from above, and that would be my guess. Archer, yeah. Coming in slow. Again, we have, we're now zooming in on a large boulder. Um, looks similar to the material we just looked at. So again, this could be another chunk of the carbonate escarpment 
that is broken off from above and Traffic. rolled down. And it looks about as convincing as we can tell from just looking at video. Yeah, come a little wide, video. A little wider, Ryan. Yeah, thanks. Actually, you can come full wide. Full wide. Thanks. Floating off. There you go. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Pretty significant current up yeah. welling. It's pulling the tether too. Rotating. One of the clues to help us recognize these rocks is if we can see the inside. And so what we think here is all the light areas are actually showing us what the rock really looks like. Okay, the yeah, darker Dave. brown areas are a coloring that's coating Brilliant. the surface and, and prevents us from seeing inside. Go ahead, video. But both no, the I color, didn't. if we can see through these coatings, and the textures we see are, are the clues which help us recognize what these rocks are. If you just want to tilt nope. up, Dave, and just give him an idea of the texture. So the best is if we can find the lighter areas. Okay. So come a little wide, video. So if we come out a bit. Get an eye on the lighter area. Let's figure out where we are. Holding there. Uh, down. Down to the right there. Right. Yeah, yeah that would be great. So in the can right. You go to the side there. Yeah. So Uri's saying, can you go to the right? where there's kind of that crack. So just coming up above the Go lasers ahead. now. Go ahead, video. Yeah, I, I think we the brown coating is not there and we're getting a, uh, a, a visual of the inside of the rock. And the best interpretation seems to be that this is a piece of the carbonate. Jason thinks it might be in situ. I have to say I'm not totally convinced by that, but again, it's one of these things that's very difficult. Yeah, I don't know. There are some patches of gray and some dark gray, and there are some uh, clasps in it that look dark, unless I'm wrong. Maybe you can pan the camera to other parts a little bit of the rock. Um, very just, yeah. Thank you, guys. So, yeah, Uri, I can see the gray areas. It's kind of, uh, I mean, is, is that a little finer grained layer within the carbonate, and it is a boulder that's just on its side? Yeah, right in here a little. And we got to go. Got a couple little wide video. Coming see if we out. can see one last thing. Still pulling. Copy. Hold there. Holding. Okay, well actually we want to go. We have to go. Uh, any last snap zooms? Um, could you just go wide? See? Come on wide, video. Pull wide. Give you one last view of the whole thing there. Okay, video. Oh, you're full wide. Thanks. Roger. Coming up. Thank you, Paula and team. That was great. You are very much our eyes. Are we um, getting ready to leave the bottom, or do we have some more time? Nav, sorry. Yeah, watch leads. Um, got 30 more minutes. 30 more minutes to yeah, leave the Right bottom. now, time off the bottom is 4.15. So. Okay, great. So our time off the bottom is 4.15. We're at a depth of 3255. Five. Video. Another one of these large rocks coming up on your right. Okay, Don't see yeah. much beyond that. 
Serious you might inform that a bit more. So I guess as we're moving along, we have um, just time to introduce uh, the pilots in the front row. Um, we have Brian Bingham um, from the University of Hawaii. He is the ROV lead in navigation right now. In the middle, the lead pilot is Chris. Chris, what's your last name? Ritter. Chris Ritter? Yeah. And then who's There's on the right? Is that Dave there. Wright? <laughs> Yellow. Possibly an anthropogenic item. And we have item. Ed uh, and, on video and... Daniel, helping with video as well, and I'm Andrea Quattrini, and Mike Cheadle idea. is to my left. I'm betting aerosol. We're on the yeah. Okeanos Explorer, yeah. second dive today. Looks like uh, air freshener or something. Yeah, <laughs> right to that. Looks like we have some trash. Is it a thermos? A spray can. Yep. A little more push. And lots of shell debris around in the sediment. Mm -hmm. And coming out. Yeah, it's fine. Can we get a zoom in on the, sh the shell debris again? Yeah, sure. Hawaii. Yeah. Let's find another area. Pick up your uh, starboard lower swing arm. Yeah, go ahead. That will be helpful. So currently we are approximately 50 miles um, from the northwest corner of Puerto Rico. Okay, you can uh, start to come in video. Roger, coming in. Just walk around the shells. So we have pteropods and... Holding here. Copy, yeah, just hold there. There's some gastropod shells. It's like another nematocyst from Sargassum floating through. You want to zoom on anything in particular, Andrew? No, that's all, thank you. And so, Amanda, a question for you. All these shells, they have been there. again transported down yeah, from the shallower um, slopes higher up. Are you asking Amanda Demopoulos or Andrea Quattrini? I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's <poor> Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> the Sorry. person Thanks. sitting next to you. <laughs> the person sitting next to me. Um, they're they're midwater column, and so mm. they are their tests sink to the bottom. Okay. Yep. But Andrew, if I can follow that up, I got it right that time. Um, um, so why here? I mean, okay, if they're, they're midwater and they're just sinking to the bottom, why in some places do we see them and some places we don't? Well, I think and maybe you guys can answer this a little better, but the way that the currents are moving and things seem to be accumulating in patches, okay. right? So it's right. not just here. We see pteropod shells and deep sea it. sediments all over the place. But I think here especially, we're seeing patches of accumulation. We see the, the, the groups yeah. of the patches of sargassum accumulating in an area, oh. and cobbles and other types of debris. So. Sounds very yeah, reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> should 
rotated almost all the way to the left, I believe. I think I did. Okay. You can deploy it again if you want. Well, I figured the next time you... Put right above that rock, maybe? Yeah, perch sideways. You won't uh, dust off your... Oh, I see. You've got a big shadow from there. Yeah. That's what I was saying. That's no fun. There's another interesting... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure there's anything there. It looks like a... I mean, it's a Where? Very interesting rock below. But uh, No, I think off to your right. Let's see if you just come around to... Right in there. I haven't seen that. That smaller, uh, darker yeah, object with the, the two light colored. Uh, Susan, I think it's, it's difficult. Right we were talking about now. this earlier. Sure we're on a slope, there. and last time we looked, it's, it's yeah, dipping at about sure 40 about degrees. Yeah, and so the question on. is, is this sediment filling in a rocky Stop slope, in which case the sediment Pin? thickness might be yeah, very variable, yeah, and maybe at most a meter or so thick. No, it's just so thick. Chlority, or is it some sort of sediment okay. debris flow I mean, also right. down a slope but of uh, a thicker nature? Um, I think the geological thought was this is likely to be um, sediment that's just completely filling in the, the, the angular structure of a rock face. So um, we would guess, you know, no more than a couple of meters or so. Definitely some patterns in the sediment here. I think I'm coming up on a feature here. Yeah. Are we getting that in serious view? Yeah. Oh, so this is quite different coming up. That's a big change. We made it. It looks like we might have made it. We might have made it to uh, to actual real outcrop, where a lot of this debris is coming from. Nice to be able to get a shot, maybe, of the transition. So we're panning right now to the to oh, the uh, east okay. from rock to sediment. Okay. Let's see. I can. My iris is all So this really does right look now. like outcrop. Okay. We finally made it up the yeah, my, uh, sediment slope. And hopefully can get close in yeah. and see if we can recognize the rocks that are forming this outcrop. And I hope I have Jason and Yuri ready to help me try and figure out what we might be seeing. Let's see if we can get it better this way. Another midwater shrimp. Did you want to zoom in on a local spot, Ed? Oh, uh, no, I, I'd shrimp. like to just jump in so we can see the debris. transition from the rock to the sediment somewhere. Okay. Down in there is fine. Okay. Okay to go in? Are you, are yeah. you dropping down? No, go ahead. Coming in. Bring my iris down. So as we zoom in, what we're seeing... Should can, bring a little more light? Can we turn the lasers on, pilot? Sure. What we're seeing are these rounded angular clasps still covered with um, at least a thin manganese coating. Some are black, some are more brownish. Susan chimed in by the event log and suggested this is a big conglomerate. We can see the spacing between the lasers is 10 centimeters, so these clasps are 30 to 40 centimeters across and more. One of the obvious questions is, is it a solid rock? And I okay, think it likely wow. is to be coherent like that, in which case, if it is, it is very much some sort of conglomeratic deposit. That's full wide. Yeah, thanks, video. Yeah. Or... Well, actually, we're going to do a pilot change, so stand by here. The alternative is that it is just some sort of cemented pile of debris that is somewhat more resistant and is sticking out. Another uh, plastic plate in the middle of that field right there. Bright white. 
The pilot video um, Sirius HD is full wide, no gain. Jason Chater just chimed in and said it, is, it does look similar to the volcanoclastic conglomerates that, that have been previously seen around Puerto Rico. Um, a volcanoclastic conglomerate is a, a rock that's made of big pieces of rounded bits of other rock, which in this case would have been volcanic pieces which are rounded and, and stuck together to form a conglomerate. All right, let's trade out. Come on, guys, we gotta run. Let's get up the hill, come on. Looking down at you. So uh, we're still moving south, looking into this um, higher slope here at a depth of 3,210 meters. Is that a fish lower right by any chance? There's a pretty good view in uh, the, the no, feed two of the negative. serious view of the ROV deep discoverer looking south onto the wall. You don't have your port vert? Nope. No port vert. I don't see any faults. It doesn't appear to be enabled. Try uh, hold up, Dave. We'll get it. So this looks a little Thanks. interesting, Mike. Is this kind of the the shape of it? It looks like a little step or something. Again, one possibility is we are seeing some layering in these rocks. Again, Can't like we saw yesterday, out. the bedding. Um, that you know we've got different units that have been built on top of each other and the semi-horizontal lines are the boundaries Come between those Jeff. units. Yeah. Uh, Very like much does look like yeah. a yeah. conglomerate as Susan yeah. originally yeah. suggested. Yeah. What? This, this is, watch it. Yeah. It's bumping up against me. I think it's... it's and yeah. Did you explain to our viewers what that means, conglomerate? Yep. So I'm going to swing yeah, but I'll do it again. Um, a conglomerate is a name we use for a rock that's made up of bigger pieces, often rounded well, pieces, um, which are okay. greater than a okay, centimeter a or so across. Thing. So yeah, a sedimentary that. rock that's formed by the accumulation of, of rounded Stable. lumps and pieces. Now, as we go up, oh, kill your, uh, we're starting to Actually, see clearly that, that this is a rock. Yeah, it is back. not okay. um, yep. debris. Um, All right. It's <laughs> it really just it does Jim. look like a, a series of massive conglomerates, which must be on Thanks. the order of, of many meters thick, 10, 20 meters thick. Part of video, full wide, no gain. Thank you, video. We had to sort out a little issue there. Roger that. I think we're uh, back up and running. Possible coral straight ahead, lower frame. Possible cor coral. See that? Maybe an octo right there. Stand by. And another branch. Uh, Jason Chater just below to uh, the right. Um, okay. I'm entered set into up the, to go the, in. the chat room Roger. and Going made ahead. the comment that Focus you typically see these sorts of rocks yeah. as the product of debris flows. Yeah, along the flanks Perhaps. of submarine yeah. or even subaerial volcanoes. Yeah. So if so, then, uh, we're looking at rocks that are right older than the carbonate platform. Um, see that tens of millions of to years right. old yeah. that formed possibly on an old sure volcanic thing. arc. Um, and that's Just the material lasers. that we know exists under the now. carbonate platform. So if we're below the carbonate platform, it's not surprising that we're finding these sorts of rocks here. Not getting a lot of interest. Maybe they've seen this. So, can we pilot zoom in any tighter on that? Coming in. Coming in. Coming in. Whoa. I lost my toe hold. Yeah, coming out. One full wide. And then, uh, so if we out. could also, after we get a close of that, get another view of that um, stalk on the left. Okay. There is a. 
crinoid below the rock or star. Do you see it, the pink yeah, arm? Are we moving? Yep, I yeah, see I it. Yeah, I see that too. We, we got a brief zoom on the sponge. Do you want to see this? Jim? Yeah, but and then if you could go back to that other. Yeah. Sure thing. Jim, are Thanks. we moving? Yes, we are in the, in the middle of a move. Uh, which direction? Can we are you going go in on that and try to... Yeah, that's dark. Yeah, I know that's uh, a sponge, but I've never I seen that, that morphic type stuff, before. I can get them. And I'm pretty sure that uh, white um, branching, what appeared to be a coral, is actually a like uh, bryozoan, but I really needed yeah, a closer look back. at the, the, the tips of, of the that animal. Probably halfway through and that. And we have a Brasingid sea star here. Ship. I think this is the second Sorry, observation of this okay. today. Freyella. Yeah, rather so get the whole okay. organism. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to come up to the stalk. Thank you. Right know, Jeff's telling me I should scoot ahead okay. a little. Okay, I'm going to bring your iris down so we don't get blown Just out. Good. Still partial. There might be a crinoid on the sponge as well. Can you go in on that from there? Or is it no, too I think I can. soft contrast? Uh, so I can get here. Oh, I'll try to walk it up. Just had a mysid shrimp or a possum shrimp uh, float through the screen. Those are might be backing away. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely backing okay, away. That's good. Coming Thank out. You. Yeah, I am. We have another uh, brittle star, um, which was Jeff directly above scoot. that sponge. Right. Okay, if we come across another uh, one of those white uh, branching things, if we can get a video of it, uh, closer zoom. Roger that, Andrea. We are full wide. Oh. Yeah, sponge on the left. We have observed that species a few times. I am just gonna shimmy up this facing the slope, shimmy off to the left as I go up. Sounds good. <coughs> More bamboo. Potentially. Is that another piece of bamboo or anthropogenic? Anthropogenic. Snap, snap zoom. Right. What's the inside of a bamboo? Huh. Does it seem sort of a bamboo coral? Bamboo? Okay, come wide. Full wide. Coming up and over. Scoot out in front. Holothorian, maybe? Benthodites holotherian. The channel's interesting. Can we kill lasers? It 
So Susan Schnur is pointing out this is an uh, interesting sediment difference here. Is it a shoot, perhaps? Indeed. Indeed, yeah. Um, likely a more recent, slight, and hence the different colors of recent sediment coming down the lighter area. What's our time off bottom, Jim? Uh, six minutes. I'd like to use about 40 seconds of that six minutes at the very end, pilot. 40, exactly 40. Six minutes. 38, maybe 40. How about six right minutes and 40 seconds? There we go. This is a neat feature. Look at the serious view. That's Can nice. we turn the lasers on again, please? Lasers, Jeff. Thank you. Call call up that, call up that. Oh. And could we zoom in into that white rock and we might Have be able to see, take it get an idea of what it's made of? Go so again, that's where uh, a piece has fallen off. Yeah. Looks like carbonate. I'm going to try to walk it back. I'm adjusting your iris so you won't really see the lighting change based on your distance. Okay. You're definitely Very closer though. Yeah, I'm touching Jason, my Jason, are we looking at a piece of, that's nice. of carbonate there that's split open so we can see the inside of it? It may look more silicic. Watch the uh, craft. Yeah, Uri suggests it could be silicic. Mm. Can you tell? It's still it's out there. Close yeah. by. It is, you're right. Well, Absolutely. Well, well. Kind of. You also get an idea of how thick out. that coating is. Exactly. When we come out. So Andrea pointed out that out what's there happened like there that. is that rock has like been that. cracked open and the front side has fallen out. And as we went past there, you can see how thick the manganese coating Quite. is, which normally yeah. covers all these rocks and makes them so hard to identify. How are we for ship position? Sirius is. So it looks like right that now. coating is a guess from yes. the lasers is maybe, a, south, I I maybe a few returns. millimeters to a st half a centimeter thick. Do we want to stop the ship move and let it settle for the next four minutes, Jim? What well, can we also, if we have a chance, zoom on the coral on the left? I'm happy to do that. Yeah, let's stop here. Still be enough swing Definitely left to here get we have a, a coral. Bridge I'm nav. still questioning that okay, from Ed, before. I'm just but real slowly we'll rock it to the left go ahead, when nav. you go in. Roger. Yeah, um, I just so came on. Uh, uh, my understanding is we're still moving south. Is that go correct? No, thank the you. ship is now stationary. Slow zoom. Ah, okay, thank you. Yep. So, so, so wrong. We're stationary. Okay. Holding here. Oh, the ship is. Camera's okay, at 60 degrees. Okay, so we're looking at an octocoral here, bamboo coral, yeah. again, uh, really large polyps. Holding there for hold we, uh, of We observed organism. another species yesterday. Um, this is likely something Nine, different, maybe ten. in the same genus. Pushing in a little bit more. Really large polyps. Holding here. All oriented the same way as well. Again, Jason just chimed in and, and made an important comment that, of course, this outcrop might be the source for a lot of the rocks we were seeing further down the slope. If this thing breaks off, these rounded clasps just roll down the hillside, and that's what we were traversing. I'm going a little bit more if it feels like we're going to bounce up. Oh, come on. We're just about straight down on you. Should we start moving? We're just swinging a little. I don't have anything coming, so. Okay. And you can see the nodes and the inner nodes of this bamboo coral um, fairly well. The white and the dark brown um, differences here resemble bamboo. We saw actual bamboo <laughs> today. 
right. several times. Okay. Coming out slow. Really large polyps. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, usually we need to look at little, little calcium faster, carbonate yeah. elements uh, in the Coming tissue of the octocorals for identification purposes. For what? And um, talking to Les Watling from Hawaii uh, last night about the corals that we saw on yesterday's dive. Um, his request was to uh, try to get close-ups of the pops sometimes you can see whether or not earlier. there are actual, actually yeah. spindly uh, sclerites within the polyps or not, and this is uh, helpful for uh, taxonomic identification. Jeff is looking straight down at me. All right. I'm going to scoot up on yep. top of this. No. Yeah, I don't hear I think I've, uh, I think I've pretty much stopped it right here, pilot, actually. We are supposed to pull at 2015, so... We've got about 15 seconds to anyway, look at it. Shall we go. rise to the top of this feature and then uh, stretch out, guys? Okay. Yeah. Was it Ed who was asking for some time? Ed needs 40 just, seconds. Yeah, 40 and seconds. We're at a depth of 3170 meters. Like Thanks, Mike, for putting the lot long in. I'm sorry? I'm just about at the top of this, yeah. and I need to stretch out anyway, so I'll just stretch out here. Ed, what, do you need to go black on the camera? No, what? I just want to change some adjustments and record it. Okay. Do I need to stay still for you to do that? Nope. But okay. I need uh, I need to see bottom. Okay. You're free to play Roger. as you need to. Roger. Thank you very much. Clipper, can you clip this starting at 2015-22? And mark on adjusting three. Mark on adjusting two. Two back to normal. Mark on adjusting one. And final mark. And returning one and three. Thank you, pilot. Okay, I'm gonna spin around and stretch out. Copy that. One of stow swing arms. Wow, oh, that's pretty interesting. Is that all sediment shoots coming down? Yeah, exactly. That's um, that's the source of what we saw down further, wasn't it? That's probably true. So this is the the light colored material. It's uh, recent sediment just sliding down a sediment chute as we're looking down to where we were just a little while earlier. Okay, I'm gonna drive right out underneath you and stretch out, Jeff. Okay. While you stow stuff. Yep. So, so are you, should we get the ship moving into the weather or off of the face, off of the slope? Um, why don't we just come up a couple, 100 or 200 meters, yeah. and then we'll yeah, just get should matter. Yeah. And we're getting ready to leave bottom. Once, once our depth I get here is 3166. We'll I think that concludes our dive today. Um, it's a really successful dive. Okay. Uh, today is the 11th of April, 2015, our second dive of Oceano Profundo. We have been operating about 50 miles northwest of uh, Puerto Rico. And um, uh, some highlights today, uh, in terms of biology, we observed at least one coral, possibly two, at the very end of the dive. Um, the, definitely a bamboo coral. A few holothurians. Um, what about six of mine? Oh, the lizardfish, Bathysaurus, so and the Coifanoides rat tail. But I think the most interesting um, thought that I don't love biology and think it's fascinating. Uh, this okay. was a <coughs> really cool geology dive a and lots of you, really yes. interesting yep. so reasons as to why we were here. Um, uh, so I'm going to turn that over to Mike Chino and let him uh, talk yeah, about our quick summary of the geology of this dive. And just real quick, we'll have a post yeah, Bridge, um, science are, uh, conference call terminating the dive now at and we'll a be starting um, recovery. 15 minutes from now. Head and I'll post that number for, uh, and uh, instructions that on ship Take away, Mike. Thank okay. you, Andrea. Yeah, I think it was an exciting geology dive. We started on the bottom of a valley in a big fault control valley and saw lots of ripples and sand ridges, which in themselves were interesting. And then we hit this 40 degree slope and traversed up this 40 degree slope, which was showing us lots of sediment de no, deposition not. running down the hillside. Why don't you finish that we one on the way up? We the dive the by reaching this outcrop of Roger. massive okay, conglomerate, can, which we were um, arguing about side. what actually it is. Is it a volcanic plastic yeah. rock yeah, that's so. something like 50 to 100 million years old in the basement of Puerto Rico, or is it a carbonate conglomerate on top? So I think in the end, a very successful. Um, dive, um, 
and one of the most important things is we saw a nice uh, complete story RV. in other words all those blocks that we were traversing to start Six. with were almost certainly okay, emanating the from the yeah. cliffs Welcome that we found at the end those yep. conglomerates were breaking up, up and yep. shedding yes. their debris Story down the slope. Over. So no, we're not another not up yet. big <laughs> target for the expedition is looking at these okay, active hill slopes. That's very much what we saw today. Up. Okay, copy. So thank you everybody for listening. Yeah, and thank you all to our shoreside uh, shoreside uh, scientists who participated with us on a Saturday. Um, we had several folks at, uh, inter at the command center at Huey, uh, Tim Shank, Ty Taylor yeah, Hi out, Sh right excuse now. me, Tim Shank, Tyler Hyo, and Uri Tenbrink. And okay, we also Joey have Amy Beckwith-Taylor, uh, Chris Kelly today all day with us. I appreciate that. Cranking Mike Beckione, uh, Michelle oh, Scherer. Um, and if three. I left any of you out, out, thank you. And uh, Christopher Ma for calling in. We also have our Twitter followers. Um, who are tweeting up, uh, the dive, and it's pretty and awesome. I can go back so and look at some images and pull some things off for, my, for myself really quickly. So thanks, Chris Kellogg and others, for um, tweeting about the, the mission. And thanks to the crew, the ROV crew, the pilots, the navigators, the video, and everybody that makes this whole thing a success. Go ahead of me a little. Nope. Watch leads, video, permission to disconnect the conference call. I was just backing it off a little bit as you catch up. Roger, thank you.